start a recording and um, firstly I would like to apologize to all our viewers but we have America's greatest greatest um, most brilliant up-and-coming comedian Comedy is back. Comedy is not dead. It's John Early. It's yes, John I, I would Sorry. just like to yeah. add to that. Uh, yeah. add to those introductory comments yes. by saying, uh, yeah. we, uh, Dave and Ed, uh, um, are, are very optimistic about the future of mankind despite yeah. all the difficulties right now. And we believe that our guest this evening, John Early, is going to be part of the Great a, Awakening. The, a great, <laughs> oh. beautiful. Yeah beautiful new Hollywood of <laughs> peace and love. And he's gonna be the leading light. Yeah. He's a comic genius. Yeah. So John, where did it all- My go? God. That's a fact. Yeah. There you go. So Ladies and gentlemen, we give you John Early. John, yes. John Early, a graduate of NYU Tisch, we believe. No, 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 no. Came, pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. <laughs> like, <laughs> Speaking of which. I just kind of working. Yeah. Right. Let's go um, let's way back to Nazi Yeah. Let's yeah. go way back to Nazi <laughs> Exactly. Well, are we going to acknowledge that? Sorry, hold for the UPS truck. I'm outside. Um, are we going to acknowledge that David and I literally know each other? We do. Yeah. Yes, we do. We do. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know you were doing this podcast until, like, I kind of put it together with just the email. <laughs> okay. Brilliant, yeah. John, I remember you in your formative years um, at the front desk at the Atlantic Theatre Company. And you, I know. Uh, and, yeah, and you were, you were a very nice chap. Well, you, I mean, I was telling Gordon that you were, like, you know, one of the few, like, non-mentally ill students. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. and, like, I feel like the front, whoever was working the front desk kind of was always the, the canvas onto which conservatory and NYU students projected all their, like, rage and fears, and, and it, was, it was a bizarre job. It was a mostly easy job, but you, like, you were such a just kind, normal person, and I always appreciated it. John, thank you so much. Yeah, that, yeah, that means a lot. Yeah, I, I, and I haven't changed either. You know, I, I clearly. Yes. If I if I may interject, please. Which is, which, which is, uh, <laughs> this for, is getting for, awkward. Is, no, I know. I know. We, we want this. Uh, uh, um, with just some facts for our viewers. Uh, yeah. John just mentioned there his um, sensational, genius, gorgeous boyfriend, Gordon Landenberger, who is the Jimmy Stewart of our generation. A beautiful, <laughs> beautiful man, uh, a genius, a friend of mine, an old friend of mine. Another figure who you're going to learn more about in the coming years, folks. Okay, exactly. back to Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, you yes. know what I realized, yeah. John, uh, b before I continue with this question? Um, I only realized this today, Dave. Yeah. It's very rude of me when I talk about people's early days. Mm. I always name the year they were born. So I'm not going to do that this time, John. Um, you're just going to tell us about yeah. your early days. In it's literally not rude. I was born in 1988. Okay, thank you. A great, great year, year yeah. for Ireland. A, a great year for the Republican Party, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> what? Just kidding. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Just we got another Republican president yeah, yeah, after we, eight years? That Bush senior, that limped in. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. The man who was responsible for JFK, uh, uh, the assassination of JFK. And, yeah, yeah. and the Gulf War. And the Gulf War. Yeah, exactly, yes, yeah. yeah. Did you know about the JFK thing? John, you look shocked about the JFK thing. I did not know never, about the JFK connection, but I fully, I want to say before you tell me anything, I completely believe it. Thank you. You, yeah. you, you look okay. up the Wolfman theory. <laughs> okay, uh, I can't George, wait. George Bush Sr. was known as the Wolfman. Also, uh, Bob Dylan's song, uh, A Murder Most Foul, goes into this in great detail. Not that not Bob Dylan oh. or anything, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Nashville, Tennessee, 1988. Yeah. Born and raised. You were, you were born a human. I was born yeah. 1988, and and do you so want me to kind of? I was. I was born in a hospital. <laughs> why were you sick or something? Like why were you born in a hospital? Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> doulas weren't like you know in fashion then. It was very. Um, it was the standard. Sure. It was the cultural standard to be born in a hospital, but I guess probably also a privilege. You guys are attacking me for my kind of beauty, <laughs> <laughs> for my upbringing. It's yeah. really scary. It's scary. Yeah. 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 It's very right wing yeah. of us. Excuse me, yeah. <laughs> John. You're a beautiful Aryan man. We were just... yeah. <laughs> oh, we gotta talk about Aryans. I mean, okay. there's no denying it. There's no denying the features, and yeah. Okay, we're gonna the... we're gonna let you speak now. Yeah. 
Oh. Well, okay, so, okay, born in Nashville, born at Vanderbilt Hospital. Mm-hmm. Try, I'm trying really, I'm trying to weave my um, upbringing as authentically as possible and not slip into the kind of easy narratives as a gesture to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, but it's hard not to. It's so it's so easy to just you know go into the 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 bullet points. But well, I mean, okay. We did our research. Mom and dad, beautiful yeah. people. Presbyterian minister dad. Yep, and mom. And, okay. Yeah. She was Church of Christ, which is another kind of you know gutless denomination of Christianity, <laughs> and um, and uh, and then became Presbyterian later. They they really didn't. They were both full-time pastors for a long time, but then by the time like I was a kid, they kind of stopped doing it. I think they were just like they wanted to like actually have real jobs, like lasting jobs that didn't. Because too, when you're like a when you're a minister, you always have to like you know answer the call and like go to different churches and like you're you you know people aren't like head pastors for that long in places. You're kind of like it feels it's very like old school, like mm-hmm. yeah, like traveling salesman or something. But like it's um. Yeah, so they they stopped when I was little, but they still did like, you know, weddings and funerals and they would guest preach at places all the time. Um, So I would get kind of carted around to like other Southern states and like watch them preach, which was so bizarre. Right, right. right. So you did did get to see them do their thing. That's lovely. Definitely, definitely. So you were were exposed to Christianity a lot as a... a yeah definitely but it's like i feel like when people hear that they assume they have they're like immediately have these associations with like speaking in tongues and like jesus camp and stuff and like it really was like you know presbyterians or like i guess like a certain one half of presbyterianism there's like i think a really conservative branch of it too but like it's mostly pretty just kind of like neutral it's like it's kind of like sweet and calm and like and like you know kind of liberal ish you know Mm -hmm. and it's not very i don't know like it's really easy as a kid to just be like bored by it and not like traumatized by it (laughs) right you know because it's really just kind of like nothing you just kind of sit there for an hour and like you sing some hymns but even the singing isn't vulnerable like the singing is like very just like do, boo, do, 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 do. <laughs> like it's not yeah. no one's like oh, no one's like overcome i guess is what i'm saying so yeah. it's like all, all that is to say it's like the kind of least scary version of like christianity you can imagine and and then also like i didn't i wasn't really because of that i also feel like i kind of could retreat into my own like imagination <laughs> and during like or like you know at least like chip the nail polish off my sister's fingernails out of like sheer boredom you know yeah. And like, so I, I don't, I also feel like I don't know anything about Christianity. And I do feel like I, a kind of project I want to do uh, later, like now in my life, is to actually try to understand it a little bit. Because I feel like it's like the root of all of my humor. And I don't understand why, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. you know? Wow. So yeah. I, I feel like if I actually kind of read the Bible, which would be like absolutely exhausting, but I... Or just like got a little bit in- more into the history of Christianity, I could like locate some of the like DNA of my sense of humor. <laughs> That's like a huge goal. Wow. Yeah. And I wanted to premiere that goal on y'all's podcast. Oh, oh awesome. yeah. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're really excited. We're gonna get into the goals anytime soon. I, I, I can't wait, John. I I, I can't wait. <laughs> I see you playing a, a conservative preacher in True Detective 7. Thank you. In four years' time. It will be against type, but I think you could do it. Yeah. Definitely could do it. Oh, no. I feel like it's fully it, – it should be my type if, if the industry had a clue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. Did your parents influence you as a performer in any way, seeing them do their thing, did that, you know, subconsciously or anything like that kind of seep in, perhaps? Definitely. I think that will – as people especially like not as like pastors but but they're the kind of they're the divide between the divide or like whatever it is like the the kind of the tension between their like kind of pastor personas 
I'm like sort of slowly. Re- you're watching me realize in real time that I have a hot neighbor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Describe him. <laughs> um, like big bushy gray beard. Oh wow, older man. Like yeah. older man, like tank top, bandana around the neck. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Hot. Tattoos. Just hot. Okay. And and I think a wife. No, I don't see any tattoos. Well, I love Maybe. it. Yeah. We're, we're going very Howard Stern here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the t- kind of tension between their, like, I would say their, like, the way they act at home and in their personal lives versus the way they act uh, as, like, preachers, like, you know, at the pulpit, I feel like was very, I guess, like, interesting to me. They're all, I feel like as people, they're, like, deeply funny and smart people like my dad is like a true like he's like laugh out loud funny like on like a joke level like full like and my mom is very very funny in a kind of like neurotic cerebral way I would say like um but like as pastors and I always kind of admired this about them they, they were they were both very I I feel like and I don't know what this is like because you know, both their dads were pastors mm-hmm. So there is a kind of family business, potentially a resentment there. I, they never told me that, but I wonder wow. if that's part of it. Yeah. And wow. kind of like a, a quiet, ever so quiet kind of Protestant, like rebellion, maybe. It's just a little bit, like a little bit of like a disdain for kind of like showmanship in like mm-hmm. preaching or something. Like they're very both kind of like modest performers. They're very kind of subtle. Uh-huh. So I would say I'm not influenced by them as like, you know, performers, but like I am kind of like, I feel like intellectually or I don't know, interested in like their kind of like discomfort with like sentimentality, like at the pulpit or something. Wow. Interesting. It's like, I don't know. I think that's really interesting. But then I think, then on, and then on just like kind of a easy like osmosis, like, level as people they're influential to me just because they're funny people yeah yeah like in their daily lives and uh, but there is yeah i'm oh, sorry and growing up in the the, the country music capital how was that <laughs> <laughs> i mean have you you been know, to Dolly- how many times have you, have you been to dollywood three okay <laughs> <laughs> but only but only like kind of later and ironically right cool and i don't mean that in like we just went to laugh at it i, I mean yeah. more like you know, I, like my friends and I went at like age like 17, 18, 19 to like kind of like in like a hip kind of like we're going to Dollywood, like, you know, <laughs> get our get our photo ops like with the kind of I don't know. Um, and it was we had so much fun. I'm glad we did it. But um, but which I guess that does. Yeah, I, I didn't. I kind of grew up in like a bubble in like kind of metropolitan like Nashville, like um, not like in true like country music loving, you know, but like it was, you know, it's like 75% of the radio stations are country. So it's like, I heard country music all the time. Like my family like likes country music and it's definitely just like, it's around, but I, but I was not, I didn't grow up like truly like in a truck like course, yeah. bumping like brooks and dunn you know <laughs> but i definitely like have an appreciation for country for sure like i yeah and like even and like pop country of the era that i like grew up in like the like like the late 90s early 2000s like that kind of like like women i i know i don't know a single like male country singer right. i mean i could name one but i don't know a single song like i love like jody messina and like martina mcbride and faith hill and shania, mm-hmm. shania twain was my first concert oh wow, wow. Oh, yeah yeah that yeah. don't, that that don't, don't impress, impress me much, much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. man i feel like a woman yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> which you know couldn't be made to- today <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah that was that was my first and second concert and it was the same tour Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I loved Shania Twain. Still the one. Yeah. one? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Go ahead, um, Dave. Yeah. Would you would you agree with um I, I guess you would. I, I mean I'm not sure, but like um Dolly Parton has great tits. Wow. I <laughs> love her tits. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like he, would you motorboat Dolly Parton? Well, of course. I would. Yeah. Okay. Would, would you? The question would I want? Motorboat. You know what motorboat is? I don't is? even know what that means. He doesn't know what motorboat is. Like, like, <laughs> like, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. in, in a kind of a maternal way, for sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, anyway. 
John, uh, let's, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm going to try to ask this question in as conservative a manner oh, as possible. Oh, oh. Like I'm a BBC <laughs> fucking host from the 60s. Oh, no. I, uh, cannot okay, wait. I'll even do a bad English accent. Yeah. When was it that you realized you were a homosexual? <laughs> um, I probably realized, no, no, I know it kind of exactly what I was like. It would have been, hold on, let me do the math. 13. I would have been like 13 years old. Wow. And, um, 2001. Yeah. No, it's very late. Um, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, I mean, I'm sure for so many people it is in some weird way, but I, no, I, my, um, yeah, but no, exactly. That, that's like right around the time. It would have been before 9-11, thank God. Um, but like, yeah, I, I guess I, I, um, I had a very kind of, I mean, there were always like the whispers of it, definitely. There was just like the kind of baseline attraction to like male teachers. Right, right. That I or and like to like kind of gentle men like like yes. like men at my church or like men you know male teachers or whatever that I was like what is that what is that you know I was like <laughs> something going on there but I wasn't like I wasn't fully like conscious of it and then it was like I don't know what I feel like I was lit I was literally looking at porn. I was like alone in my house looking at like straight porn and then like a, a pop-up was like gay 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 <laughs> and I was like <laughs> I basically just was like well I, I want to click on that cool. yeah. why do I want to click on that and then I also was like if you click on that like here we go right right like you're fully admitting it to yourself and I clicked on it and it was so hot and <laughs> then I was like and then I was like really really depressed for like, I would say like a year, just like really just kind of like, because you, you, you just think, I just thought my life was like over, you know, I was like, and then, and then I like told my best friend when I was 14, or my two best friends, and um, two girls, and they were so sweet, and it became the most fun thing in the world to like finally have like girls talk to about guys and stuff, and about like sexuality, and like, and, um, and I was really, really lucky. I. I, even though I was in Nashville, I had very kind of cool friends, and I knew that my parents were old based because of their. Sorry, can we just silence emails while we're yes sure. doing yeah. this? Hey, yeah. sure, 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 yeah. Dave, what the hell? <laughs> Silenced. I'm like near yeah. tears talking about my <laughs> sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to tell you that my parents. Um, we're liberal um no but oh. they yeah they uh whatever they i just knew kind of from their like you know their it, their politics were very defined in opposition to like southern conservatism so it was like very clear to me that they would be okay with it right. and like you know so i was very lucky but i didn't tell them for a long time like i told like every teacher or like every person I went to school like strangers on the street before I told my parents and uh and then I told my parents when I was like uh 19. Right. Even though you only asked when I knew you didn't ask when I told anyone so I've really yeah. clearly was dying yeah. to tell that story. I, sure. And, and when you were 13 when you when you when you realized this were you a performer at this point? Definitely. So you were like doing kind of like shows um, I, mean, I wasn't making money off of it, right, but right, um, right. no, you I mean, high school, uh, high, school high, high school productions. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, middle, middle, school middle school here in America. Um, <laughs> yes, I was <laughs> middle school, Dave. <laughs> middle. Middle school. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, good. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, yes, we were. I was like, yeah, I was definitely doing. I was doing plays at school, and I was like obsessed with you know, Saturday Night Live and like I was obsessed with funny people and yeah. Right. And what kind of people were you watching on Saturday Night Live no. at that time? Who were your influences? Who, back then? Yeah. The women, like the, the holy trinity of Sherry O'Terry, Molly Shannon, and Anna Gasteyer. Cause that was like, yeah. that was the generation of SNL that I like came into 
right. being with, you know, late, and like right late nineties, early two thousands, kind of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And like, they were it for me. Like, I mean, I was I, Shiro Terry was like absolute. I was obsessed with Shiro Terry. I like had like a Shiro Terry website for like two months, um, and like I wore a Spartan cheerleader T shirt to school like literally every day i was like absolutely in love with her still am and, and but then like in sorry my battery thing oh you disappeared for a second um and the, yeah and then i was like totally I, I mean i loved all three of them i i can't even they're both of them are so i'm like a third each of them you know <laughs> yeah i'm each oh wait uh, you know what i mean uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm equal yeah, parts. Yeah. I'm thirty three point three 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 percent Sherry O'Terry, and then, and then that breaks down across Molly and Anna, and then I'm like point zero 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 one percent myself. Donald Trump. <laughs> 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 Donald Trump. Yes. Yeah. Huge influence for me. Um, yeah. well, we get to that know, later. I, yeah. we're, we're talking about that stuff later. Yeah. Can you tell us about your love of Tony Collette? Yes, well, it would have been like around the same time, and like I also was in love as I was like in love with those SNL women. I was in love with Lisa Kudrow, Very nice. and oh, and because yeah, I mean she's yeah. to me is like the greatest. The she's like I think my favorite performer of all time. Period. Like. And like I was, yeah, I was obsessed with Romeo and Michelle, particularly. I mean, I watched a Little Friends here and there, but if you're looking for Kudro, like you know, you need to look elsewhere because like yeah, she's yeah, yeah. has to split the split the screen time with five other people. Um, but like I was obsessed with Romeo and Michelle, and and then I watched the movie Clock Watchers because she's in it, like a 1998, 97, like kind of Parker oh, Posey, yeah. like yeah, office, like uh, pre office space comedy, <laughs> and. Um, and and I watched it because I was obsessed with Lisa Kudrow and I was like literally trying to watch every movie she had been in and then Tony Collette was in that movie and she just really kind of like it was a very sad movie and it was also like very like it, uh, it kind of spoke to a new like I had previously kind of only sought out entertainment to like make me laugh and make me like feel kind of rebellious or whatever and, and clock watchers was the first thing where i was like oh like art can be like emotional you know and like sad and you know about things that are like unfair and like and so i was like and i think because tony collette is like the very kind of earnest like lead of that movie i kind of like was like associated her with this kind of awakening of like art can be many different things besides just like you know shiro terry being a genius you know anyway and then like so yeah i because, and then I saw Muriel's wedding, and then I was like, absolutely. Sure. I, that was like obviously the first. If you're learning about Tony Collette, you go to that movie yeah. first. And I was like, like I lost my fucking mind because at first I was just kind of like intrigued by her, and then I saw that movie, and I was like, oh, it's it's not just that she's like kind of quiet, like you know, wallflower, and like insecure, like I am at age thirteen in Nashville, like. It was also like, oh, she's also like a comedic genius. Like Miro's wedding is like a comedically like gifted performance, you know. For sure. And like really like like snot, like tears, like yeah. It's like a crazy and like a really like like physically big, like sure. like expressive performance. Yeah. I was like, it absolutely rocked my world. And then also just like that movie, like 90s Australia shit is yeah, so yeah. Yeah. exactly like as a kid in growing up in america which i know you guys can't relate to um but <laughs> <America>! as, a, <laughs> as a kid growing up in america it's we like can, we can we can say the pledge of allegiance i pledge <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, no but I, it's come like, on it's we're violent like a, we, we love gun. <laughs> come on we're violent oh my god you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're a bunch uh, of war mongering narcissists oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hashtag yeah. save the children yeah okay, but, but, okay. Yes. But let's stay focused stay focused on this but, uh, no I'd you like do say, not need to save the i'd like to say one thing about Miro's wedding that oh yes please that movie is so good because i think it it was never released in the, in the u.s it was just such a cult classic that it, it made it it made its way to the top because it's a good movie you know yes it exactly never, yeah art Pure yes. God bless. Yeah. 
God bless you for liking it. I mean, it really is high art and it is like, but I, I also think it like fit right into this other thing that I was obsessed with at that age and still am now, which is like the kind of like the nineties kind of reaction by certain like filmmakers, mostly I feel like to like suburbia, like American suburbia and like kind of buttoned up kind of yeah, like we did it. Like, you know, <laughs> kind of like right. Clinton era, like, we're done, we finished, and everything's fine. And then, like, there was, like, I feel like Todd Salons and, like, you know, Alexander Payne and, like, yeah, yeah. and honestly, like, Australian movies from that area, era, area, fuck! Right. Um, <laughs> but, like, but, yeah, the, the Australian kind of, like, like, yeah. movies that kind of show the underbelly of, like, suburbia and, like, these kind of miserable, miserable families. Yes. That was always really interesting to me because not that I was in a particularly miserable family. I mean, it, miserable as, you know, the next family, but like we, I, the kind of like Presbyterian kind of like mode of expressing one's feelings is to not express your feelings. So like, I, I like those kind of movies were really cathartic for me where everyone's right. kind of like fucked up and like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Would you would you mind telling us on a slightly different note about your first um, your first love your first romance? <gasps> your first oh my god! Romance? Hmm. I, I, I mean, I of course. Also, I forgot. I literally. That. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go. What? What? I was just wondering, were you ever, um, as a young, mm. before thirteen years of age, did you ever kiss yeah. a girl? No, I okay. kissed the girl. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I um, I I did I kiss a girl? I mean, like never in a sexual way like i would say like a peck i had a girlfriend mm -hmm. right right in in fourth grade and we dated you know for a little bit here you know on and off and, um, <laughs> <laughs> but like it was it couldn't have been less sexual there was obviously like zero exploration like yeah. we just we you know i don't know um but no i didn't and then i had crushes for sure i right up until the end there i had like really big crushes on girls which is so interesting because it's like mm -hmm. i wonder too if I, I i'm sure i've i mean I, and i have had like deep deep friendships with women since i've known i was gay that were of course like romantic in their yes. like intimacy you know so like i guess that is the same thing because what i was about to say was like have i like suppressed a part of myself that like can have crushes on women <laughs> And I probably have a little bit, but um. Anyway, <laughs> um. But uh, let's see. What were we talking about? So, oh, your first love. Oh yeah, your first yeah, your first love. What? He just talked about. Oh no, that was his no, first girlfriend. No, I yeah. meant boy. Yeah. If he's willing to speak on this For issue, sure. but if you're not, that's okay, John. <laughs> well, no, I'm of course I'm willing. I'll, I'll. There's very little that you I could you know, I can't imagine what I wouldn't talk about. Anyway, awesome. But I cool yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. We're very I, creatures. What there. a great guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, we love dancing around PC culture. <laughs> <laughs> You're well you've done a beautiful job so far. <laughs> you have not um waded into any problematic territory yet. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Um yet. Uh we listen back actually, we may have, but I mean, Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, probably because I wasn't listening. Yeah, um, I first I I don't even know. Like I I I don't like I had okay. The thing that I think would have I I probably felt was my first love was like age sixteen, or yeah, age sixteen, like at an arts camp, like a a drama camp in Michigan and I was like in a cabin with this like straight boy wow. who was like um like grew up in New York like grew up in Brooklyn and like working class no <laughs> 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 like the absolute yeah. opposite yeah. like just okay. fully like like Brooklyn Heights right okay okay, okay. you know yeah and like and like you know being groomed to go to Harvard right you know yeah. and like yeah like full legacy like and i and he was kind of an asshole oh. and like but very kind of like you know for as much as like a 16 year old can be kind of like posturing as a very intellectual and kind of like tortured and like <laughs> and, I, and i and he was and he was 
hot, like truly hot. Big D. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and I was like kind of maybe I was posturing as like, you know, I was still goofy and like, you know, I was cutie. But like I was definitely also like kind of like, yeah, I'm different. Like I like good movies. <laughs> you know, like I was like I was I built my entire identity like on like my taste in like high school, you know, middle school and high school. And like so I think that like impressed him in a way. And we started like basically like staying up late every night and just like talking. And we like, and I just was like fully like head over heels, like in love with him. And then like, he kind of took advantage of it. Or not, I mean, that's, that's, he didn't take advantage of it. He was a 16 year old boy who was like, maybe this guy will suck my dick like a mouth's a mouth. Um, but I also think he was like, I also think he was just, he was horny too, for sure. But he like, he like wanted to like hook up and I was like so bizarrely Presbyterian about it. I was like, no, which I'm like, is like my greatest regret of all time. I was like, you know, I, I can tell you're not gay, but that's also true. I really could tell he wasn't gay. Like, uh, right. I was like, you certainly are like, I can tell that you're horny and it, you wouldn't be grossed out. And like, you know, maybe you have some like latent homosexuality that you would want to explore or whatever. But I was like, I just, I didn't say any of that, but I just knew it. I was like, you're gonna like, I was so like, I was a deeply and still am like a deeply romantic person. So I thought like us talking every night was like, here we go. You know, like <laughs> we're gonna like be in love, you know? And so him just kind of like wanting to hook up. I was like, absolutely not which again so stupid and then whatever so then and then at the but then right at so like we didn't do anything and then right at the end of summer hand jobs uh, impulsive hand jobs reach, like reach around or like like simple reach around hand jobs we were kind of in like a spooning <laughs> position so it oh, was right. reach around yeah. oh beautiful yeah and I was little spoon but I'm like how did I do that was I like reaching around myself like behind me but like oh good yeah it was but it was literally the hottest thing I've ever done in my entire life it was amazing it was heaven and then it was like and also I felt like so like kind of evolved and cool that I was like doing this like with like a person who I like kind of knew was straight and it was like an arts camp and I was like yeah, yeah. like I don't know it felt really it was so hot <laughs> amazing that's amazing that's yeah. beautiful yeah Did but again but yeah. what what did you did you go back for seconds or was it, it was just a once off? Immediately after. <laughs> well, you're 60. It was like, yeah. yeah, you have to. It was like, it was like, we did it once. It was like, that was crazy. And then 15 minutes later, we did it again. And then like, never again. But then like, I, but then I really went back to school and like, felt like I was in love. And I was like, it was like, it rocked me. I like wrote poetry about him. And like, and then when my show choir like visited you heard me show choir when we visited new york yeah for some like school trip he you know and he lived in new york and i was like determined to meet up with him and i literally was like meet us at the starbucks um you know in, near 34th street <laughs> like <I'm> literally <laughs> not understanding how like for a new yorker that's like hell but i was like we're near madison square i think like you know and like we he met me at the starbucks and it was like literally i was like oh right no he, i was right he's like fully not gay he was like fully like close off I was like hey you know and i was like no so that was like that was my first kind of like piney like right like heartbreak like you know diary like uh, you know so so speaking of new york after yes. after you graduated high school you moved yes. to new york right on your own right uh, you know on my own the big city exactly what yeah. was Talk about that. Talk about John, young generally in New York. What was it like? Well, immediate crippling anxiety. Like the second I got to New York, I couldn't, my like spine, like all the muscles in my back froze. Oh. I had this like, cra like literally date. Well, first of all, you know, Steve Gerrard, right? I, he's a dear friend of mine. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you know, do you know that Steve and I, Steve was my freshman year roommate? Yes. I, I've been oh. in the apartment. It's a beautiful apartment. Yes. Yeah. It's, he still lives there. Were you in the apartment when I was there? Not when you were there, no. This is okay. not your time, yeah. What's okay, Steve okay. Gerrard for our viewers is an up and coming genius comedian. Yeah. yeah. True genius, one of the funniest people I've ever known. Yes. Brilliant visual artist and filmmaker. Indeed. Just we many, be, many we will, things. We will be seeing and hearing more of them in the new Hollywood, anyway. Yeah. Yes. yes. And yeah. Come here, um, John. Did, was Steve Gerrard in Tish also? 
for filmmaking. Oh, for yeah, for yes, yeah. and okay. we but we were literally randomly paired together and like got along so beautifully. I was so lucky because it was like the tiniest room ever, and like all my sweet mates were these like hyper like kind of masculine like. Oh, I mean, and not even really like a couple of them were like hyper masculine and were like <laughs> into the kind of like rough housing that men do that I've oh, never yeah. understood. Where I'm like, <laughs> where, I, you- where I just what. Wedgies. wedgies wedgies or wedgies exactly like, <laughs> we, like just stuff that like or just like kind of like farting and like rubbing it on each other and you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know like it's stuff that like since i was a kid like just whenever i would have to be just randomly like assigned to like being in a group of men or males because of my like because of my gender or like you know I would like when I would have to like a class project or like you know boy scouts or like whatever like or, or P- fucking PE it's just so it's like I always felt so alienated and did not understand that kind like that kind of like you know whatever so Steve was Steve was kind of my bridge to that but he also was like Steve is a freak like Steve has a gay brother and Steve is like yeah. a deeply sensitive soulful person so like yeah. and and so funny and also an appreciation for like because you know his brother was feeding him stuff his older brother was feeding him, like death becomes her like you know all these like kind of campy movies or whatever that like like he had seen Romy and michelle i'm pretty sure you know it was like so we like we got along beautifully and um but i was like yeah i was like i meet the second i got there i was so anxious that i like all the muscles in my back, I like, couldn't like walk basically. It was like psychotic. And I was just like in my freshman year, like my little like tombstone bed or whatever, like coffin bed and like couldn't move. And I was like, just like watching all these like dudes like play video games. And I was like, oh no. Wow. But then I was, then I went to Atlantic where I met you, David. Yes. Yes. David or Dave? Where, where we land? Do you want? It's the Dave and Ed podcast, but I, I'll always be David to you, John. I know. <laughs> okay, I heard David twice. I, I'm really glad. I'm really yeah. glad we're going here now because this is my kind of like deep James Lipton. David Mamet. David uh, Mamet. Yes, we're, we're going to talk about him in a second. But John, here's the thing about you. If I may lick your balls again for a second. <laughs> To me, like you're one of the most naturally gifted, one of the most naturally charismatic performers. I've ever seen you have the natural ability of a, of a Robbie Fowler that's a reference to a Liverpool yeah. soccer player from the 1990s oh my but god born with a football out of his feet but it's this natural talent You're and like go. my question is talk to us about training and I think like, mm. it influence you in any way and that's basically what I'm asking because it feels like you don't need any training baby oh my god well Thank you. Um, and then we're going to talk. That about is, you, t- you just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, okay, yeah, you just big, said. Who's a bigger star? Is it John Early or Elizabeth Olsen? That is a good we're, question. We're not sure. I mean, do I really have to say? <laughs> <All right. laughs> I think we know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, no, I'm kidding. I, I, I do think it's actually brilliant. Yeah. I remember being. Yeah. Sorry. Well, uh, <laughs> you remember what? What do you remember? You were gonna say something. Well, like, I remember just like being in school with her. I mean, I never had any classes with her, but like she was, she was younger than me, and like, but I remember seeing her in plays. And, like, oh my god! I was like, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember her doing Top Girls. Did you see that production? Oh yeah, Top. She was fantastic in that. Yeah, yeah. She was like in a, speaking like a North Country like accent, and is like sobbing, and I was like what i was like no one can do that like no one here could do that I, you know it was God. like she i did. mean you know david that like i mean we'll talk about this okay you know i'm sure you i i wonder if you experienced this i certain i was actually probably more susceptible to this because i was going to atlantic through nyu where there were like more people i mean it was like yeah. 80 people per freshman class you guys at least had like maybe 40 or what did you have we had 40 divided by two so 20 class 20 per class. Yeah. yeah like it was like a little overwhelming it just didn't feel like i was expecting you know drama school training whatever to feel very kind of like intimate and like you know i, I had this kind of like vision of new york being kind of like 70s like right. you know like 
um, abusive acting teacher, like clinking radiator, you know. I, I'm, like the, getting, I'm like, the only one of those left, by the way, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well then, sign me up. <laughs> no, but like literally, that's what I wanted. I wanted like yeah. a fucking acting teacher who like would like kind of inappropriately like invite me out to like his like nen then tuck it like you know i don't know um and yeah, then like make a pass tear the at me. Up your, tear the yeah yeah off you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you that was my dream yeah. wow. i love i'm gonna use that <laughs> um, Say it yeah, I, tonight no. please okay um, <laughs> can i tear your hole off um, <laughs> oh wow that was so beautiful <laughs> i mix it up but uh yeah, I was like, right. that's what I was expecting. Like, you know, like fame, like the movie fame. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like I wanted, you know, I wanted to like constantly be in tears and like, you know, I don't know. And, but it was instead, it was like, it was, it felt very, I mean, it was like, and this was true kind of about all of New York, which I didn't realize. I was like coming to New York post 9-11, like post Rudy Giuliani, like kind of total whitewashing sterilization capitalism like fully right. kind of cementing in new york like and that was really sad like i even though i didn't have any sort of like i didn't understand what was going on like on a kind of economic level obviously i did just have this immediate feeling like moment one of being like something is like really sad about this it was just like all every block was just like fucking yeah. Chipotle in American Apparel, you know, it was like, yeah. you know, which I got some great V-necks for there and like, but whatever from, from Chipotle. Um, Especially near at Atlantic, I mean, around Chelsea Market and there was like, that was totally corporate. Yeah. Crazy. Oh my God. I mean, literally like oh, where we upstairs. ate lunch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, again, the fantasy of New York is you go and you've like found this incredible kind of hole in the wall falafel place where I used to get like, you know, it's like, no, I was in Chelsea market where Emerald was shooting his show upstairs. Yeah, yeah. And like, it was like, and tourists were walking through every single day. And I was like, this sucks. Like, I mean, and again, like, you know, it's hilarious to be whatever. Okay, shut up. Anyway, the point is. Yeah, no, and everybody was training. so entitled. Like we were all like, oh, I'm gonna get sushi for lunch today, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the first sushi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I know exactly the lobster place. Yeah, oh yeah. Good. That was good bisque. Yeah. Woo! Woo. <laughs> um Yeah, but I no, I was so I was immediately kind of like disheartened by the vibe of like training i guess in new york and at nyu and i was like and i kind of had this feeling and i was no better but i i immediately had this feeling of like oh these people are like i guess like i just kind of wanted to be totally transported to like a kind of different like where everyone was kind of self-possessed and like um you know writing you know like working on their play and like you know i don't know I, and and yeah. what i got instead was like what i was which is like a bunch of kind of like privileged like high schoolers who like were the stars of their theater programs and were just like wanted to sing mm -hmm. right you know and yeah. like and that's totally okay i don't fault any of them or myself for wanting those things but like i did i just was like oh this is like this i don't know there was something kind of devastating about it um and but training i found i was a very good boy i was a very good student like growing up i did not drink or do drugs i and I even kind of carried that through college. Like I drank once I got to college, but I still didn't like fully like, you know, what's it called? Slingshot, like rebellion. Like I still didn't have that like response. I was very serious. So I was like, I'm gonna like do the training and then hopefully get an agent from that. And like, you know, and, and make theater with my ensemble, fellow ensemble members. And like, <laughs> yeah. I was like fully like, it was like completely earnest. like. Yeah. right into the veins like I was still a very like you know I was still a funny person you know of course I didn't lose my entire like sensibility but I was like completely like open to the training and I thought I got I got some very I think valuable kind of like frameworks <laughs> from it just like like I think the most valuable thing about like Atlantic but this is probably true about any like acting technique at its core is like invent nothing deny nothing <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. Which just I just the lines. Yeah. Which by the way, it's like I don't it's impossible to follow that, by the way. I want to be clear. I don't think like you can achieve that, but I think it's like I think like it's a really interesting way to think. It's it's really important because it's given me it immediately clicked 
like I've always had a kind of like negative like my my like the way I've gotten through life like artistically is just by going like oh I hate that I hate no that's not me I hate that it's like through the negative like right and like and Atlanta kind of helped me articulate what I was reacting negatively to and I was like realizing like, oh it's the invent nothing part it's like the when you see actors kind of like inventing what they're feeling and kind of like kind of trying to drudge up emotion or like right. you know or if you or the other the deny nothing you see like something happening around them and you're like they're not responding to that like there's like a bird flying into their face and they're like still trying to cry you know it's like <laughs> you know yeah. it's like i'm literally outside and i saw a bird and so i said that um but that's just how kind of my crazy brain works but um i'm kidding um but uh it was it was like that that kind of core concept of Atlantic, I think was really interesting to me. And like, I was really excited to like, feel like I was learning anything at all. And I was also really excited, child of ministers, like kind of like to go to a training program that was very like, uh, uh, prided itself on a kind of seriousness and like um, diligence and on this kind of like no bullshit, like no guru, type thing Mm -hmm. and and because because i was very scared of the opposite version of that of like the like the kind of like you know like group therapy kind of like really invasive kind of manipulative thing that really really terrified me and still does to some i mean definitely but like i'm not around that obviously or i am actually in la i feel like all the time but um i'm talking so much but that's the point Uh, and regarding Mamet, did you actually get to take a class? Did he ever teach a class or anything like that, David Mamet? He, yeah, he taught like uh, a guest class, like once, yeah. you know, maybe twice. I think once. You were probably there. Yeah, we all we all sucked his dick. It was great. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's like a luxury dick. Thing. Yeah, he's circumcised, by the way. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. uh, so, I like them uncut. <laughs> Would you have an opinion on his statement as a man, Mr. Early, you create so many great characters. What do you think of Mamet's statement that there are no characters, only lines on a page? Well, this is where, this is where <laughs> I felt myself kind of diverging from like Atlantic and like pretty immediately and having some real kind of like um, fundamental kind of like disagreements with them. Um, but not, but can it was I, also wait, fine. Can I interject with just like a, a, a theory and Ed Malone uh, on seeing some of your work? Like you create these amazing characters, but you are always present. And that's what I love about it. You know, it's not like you're disappearing up someone's hole like a method actor. It's like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, which is beautiful. So maybe there's a meet in the middle. There's a, be- I, exactly. Like, yeah. I think that I, I think there's something really, really interesting and really honest about that because at the end of the day, I think most of, most acting is just like using parts of yourself. And I don't even mean like your trauma, your whatever. Yeah. Oh, I no. literally yeah. mean like your behavior. Like sure. you're just like, it's so much easier to just like kind of like, how would I say that? You know, or like, <laughs> you know, like, but I, but I, um, yeah. well, I think what the the bad so yes, I, I, there's something really interesting about it philosophically. And I was like totally willing at age 18 to like believe that and, and, you know, fully, you know, commit to that like philosophy. And, but what I, what I didn't like, I feel like what that led to was this kind of like often very, um, it was like performances, like without a point of view, <laughs> like, and and I think I realized later, you know, as I was going through that program and as I be, like, became like a comedian, really, and I mm-hmm. like that the kind of performers that I like have a kind of clear like point of view on the world or a point of view on certain types of people. And like, I felt like in this kind of like the vacuum that is like acting training where they're trying to break you of your habits and make, kind of turn you into this like limp noodle that can be like reawakened through text you know like where you're just like you know where you're just this kind of absolutely pure like shoulder shot voice released you know like (laughs) you know that like that and that's again that's like an ideal but again for who like that's an ideal for acting teachers like no one wants to watch that on film stage or tv no one wants to see someone be like huh you know like 
that like it's so boring it's like and and what i i felt like there was this kind of like neutrality that was like kind of um modeled for us or was like kind of uh worshipped or something like that was the goal and like i really felt like no i guess to me the joy of acting actually is to like it isn't to like achieve some sort of like kind of um hypnotic state where i'm just like a raw kind of like um vessel for like the story it's like no what i like about acting is like i like psychology i like talking about i like talking shit like like i like mm-hmm. i like making fun of certain figures in the world you know it's like i like mm-hmm. playing a certain kind of person i like getting my anger out about the world through acting so it's like right. it's i and 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 I, and I do that through like constructing character i feel like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm like mimicking behavior that I see in the world. Right. Yeah. It, right. Like the mimicry part of it, I feel like is really important. And, and I feel like, and like kind of, and, and that is the thing that I feel like was a little kind of ignored was like this idea that you're supposed to be this kind of noble, like vessel, like empty vessel, kind of taking the side of the character and just like, let the text just kind of stream through the mouth and like, yeah. you know, and it's like, and what I wanted to do what I, and what I was kind of suppressing in myself in that training program was this part of me that actually like had an opinion and like had right. a comedic opinion of yes. people and like, and of situations. Yeah. Right. And like, I feel like being conscious of that, of those points of view, being conscious, like the way people are and the way they behave and trying to mimic that is not some sort of like compromise. Like that's not some sort of like, that's not you having some, like, I just like, there's this, it, to me, the, my greatest kind of like problem was just like this assumption that acting was about being a total vessel. Now, right. I agree that you're a fucking puppet prop, like rock. Like I, I, I completely agree about that. I'm not saying like, come on, actors have agency. Like I, I, I'm, I'm, I think one of the great things I learned from Atlantic too that I feel like I take into my life is like. I'm not, I don't think actors are important. I mean, that's not true. I, I obviously like worship actors and I, you know, you but should. like. Yeah. I think what you're saying like, is you're talented. Yes. And individual. Right, exactly. And one thing we weren't allowed to talk about in Atlantic was talent. That's a really, that's a beautiful point oh. because it yeah. is so I mean, like I mean, acting's we, a job. Talent was a dirty word o- over there. So, Interesting. you know. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. Yeah. It was like, it was very kind of like, yeah, acting's a job. It's a set of skills that are repeatable. And that is like interesting. That's an interesting philosophy that I was certainly like taken with. But like it, it did, um, it took the kind of like magic out of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then also, I mean, I'm just on a practical level, it was like, uh, you were doing scenes with like like most people in the program were bad. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and crazy, <laughs> and crazy, and I mean that's true of literally every single acting program, even like yeah. the ones yeah. that even like Brando's, like whatever the <laughs> fuck he was doing. You know, I'm, it's like, you know, I'm sure there's always crazy people. There are always really bad people. Oh. Like, yeah. but I did feel like I'm certainly not like. I, a, I'm not like necessarily inspired by like a like a majority of my peers. Of course, there were like geniuses in that program that are like are my dear friends. You know, like we, you know, whatever. But like, I also feel like the environment didn't inspire people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it like it it taught it like really kind of deadened people and made people kind of like become like. Like it just like it fetishizes like discipline in a really kind of like sick way. <laughs> right. right. Um, like the last thing I'll say. Please, yes, please. please can, yeah. can I can I finish, guys? <laughs> um, I get a <laughs> oh, yeah. The last thing I'll say, is like which I feel like is a much more interesting kind of actual like anecdote about Atlantic is like as you know like the fifteen minute rule. Oh yeah, Karen. Yeah. Co- what Karen, does that mean? Karen Cole. Cole. And I what does that can't mean? believe I don't you don't know the fifteen minute rule. Okay, so oh. it's like yeah, I'm a clown. Fifteen minutes before class, you have to be silent. Oh my God, really? Yeah. Yeah. And like, out of respect to whoever's like performing that day, like whoever's doing a scene that day, you know? And like, to me, it was like, I don't, this is, you are assuming 
you're making an assumption that this is it's it's fascism first of all you're making i wonder how that goes over today honestly with like young cool woke kids um, <laughs> we've got we were a litter oh sorry go ahead john sorry i didn't, sorry, I didn't hear i didn't hear you ed we're glad you didn't hear that go ahead okay okay um you have it on record i didn't hear it um no but it's like the assumption that like that kind of like somber like silence and like gravity is like the same kind of base that every single actor would respond well to that is not fair yes. like and it's 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 small-minded and it's like and i and like some people do really need that and and good for them i need if i am like in an environment where it's like you're literally getting in trouble if you talk for 15 minutes you will zap all kind of all the joy like out of what I'm doing obviously and that's what happened it was like because it made it made the scenes all kind of like absolutely humorless and like that's been a good but like again all this is like that's what's good about all training is like it's the most important thing I feel like about any sort of training that you do is like it's not about what you like positively take about it. it's like literally how you like reject it and like shape yourself in opposition to it yeah. you know and uh, like yes. one way one thing that I took from that was like I feel like now it's really important to me that when I'm like shooting something, it feel very kind of like silly and casual and like, and kind of like, blah, 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 you know, like, yeah. like I need to be like making jokes that horror angles go on. Right. <laughs> so I feel like loosey goosey and like, you You're know, and up. like I'm having fun. Like I'm having yeah. fun. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Please just tell us about your, your, your decision uh, to go into the world of stand up. And how um, that was the New York stand up scene. Back Sorry, I'm. I um. One second. Looking at the hot guy again. Is, is he back? No. Okay. <laughs> Someone else. Oh, it's Gordon. <laughs> no, 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 Gordon's home. Gordon's using the computer, which is why I'm using the phone. Um, but we are at two percent, so I may need to switch to the computer. Oh, that's okay, okay. It, ladies and gentlemen. Is that okay? Can no, I just no, jump I, back on? Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Come. Is it okay with you? We we'll, okay you. We'll talk yeah. about ourselves. Yes. Thank okay. We'll have you right back. He's going to switch okay. to the computer, folks. Okay. We'll take a, <laughs> take a commercial break, guys. Guys, this is great. Wow. Boom. Casper. Yes. Oh, are you actually going to end or are you just going to let it, let, we should let it, because you'll just go, oh, go ahead. Oh, he's going to join the meeting he's again. He's going to join the meeting All right. again. Guys. I think. Wait, did I understand that correctly? Do we have to end it or do he? He's going to join. He can join the meeting again. again. So yeah. Fine. What a, isn't this our best one yet, folks? This is, this is, this is fantastic. This is our best one yet. Yeah. Riveting. Should we pause, though? Should we just start recording? Or we should, we should, yeah. We're going to take a commercial break, guys. Okay. Can guys. we talk about We'll talk about yeah, this. Okay. Then we have to okay. set up a new meeting, though. You understand that, don't you? No, we just stop. We just pause. Oh, pause. pause right? Recording. You're right. Very good. We're going to pause recording, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, we're back, folks. John has switched to the computer. <laughs> Where were we? We were talking about, oh yeah, Mr. Early's um, decision to, to venture into the world of stand-up comedy. A comedian. Which I assume is based on his divine individualism, but we'll get him to expand on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so, describe your first... Uh, yeah, did you bomb on the first night? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, of course not ed of course not um i no i would say i like started making videos while i was at atlantic which was really kind of helping me <laughs> like you know i i just started to make these little youtube videos and um like solo comedic videos and uh and that was like very exciting for me and also like that the plan was not necessarily like the plan like since birth was to always be a kind of like funny person or like you know comedic performer of some sort I didn't know like what shape it would take but like so so I, the kind of like total 24 7 like full immersion in like you know Odette's <laughs> like you know <laughs> yeah. was like a lot for me that was like yeah. really kind of harrowing and like and I was so down and again I was like good student like and there were some I had some really amazing teachers it was very valuable in some ways but I just but I did feel very kind of um pent up 
Sure. And and I needed to like I, I needed to be like funny and I was like desperate to be funny. And so that was just kind of the obvious um step. And honestly, Steve Gerard, I feel like had a huge part in it because we lived together after college and we would, you know, I would talk a lot about it and he would like kind of help me build up my courage to do it. He was like very encouraging and um and yeah I, I and then i just kind of like i spent like two years not doing it and talking about doing it and finally right. i just did it i just my my friend theta hamill who's a mutual friend of gordon and me that's how we met um she was like she was doing this girl ariel's i forgot her name oh god if she hears this podcast i am so sorry um i was we doing this girl's show at like cameo gallery in brooklyn or whatever oh yeah Remember that place? Um, yeah. And um, Ariel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ariel. Yeah. Um, they met in Alexander class. I'm going to kill myself. Alexander for Technique class. Alexander <laughs> Technique, absolutely. Think up. And, Think up, folks. <laughs> wow, that's hot. <laughs> but she asked, or, or, Theta kind of like submitted me without asking me to like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm here. I'm here. There's a de slight delay, not in the computer, in my brain. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I just heard what you said. That was so funny. Um, but yeah, I just did her show. Whatever. That's it. And and but I was so lucky that my first it was my first show, and it was like Theta was like singing a song on it. Cocoon Central Dance Team. Do you know them? What the fuck is that? They're, um, They're the absolute best. They're like dear friends of mine, and they oh, and they I were on the. I want to know them. I want to know them. You'll definitely you'd recognize them because I they they're like. You, I, you absolutely, I'm sure, have mutual friends. I probably but, do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. um, But yeah, no, I, they were on the show, and it was just like a lovely kind of like, honestly, kind of gay, like queer, like oh. sweet little show. And like, so my, yeah, I, I honestly kind of did well. <laughs> I didn't bump. Did, did, but I think did, it's just because it was the right environment. Did you write Did you write jokes, or did you just riff a la Steven Gerrard? I wrote jokes. Okay, great. Right. Cool. For sure. Like I, I, I have to be in a very, I have to have like another person to riff. And did you, did you do it as John earlier as a character or both or whatever? I did it as myself the, when I, like the first few times I did stand up, and then I started doing characters mm -hmm. like as I was kind of getting more into the stand up like culture and like I felt a little kind of like angry at the expectation of like you know this was the era of like the mark like peak mark Marin like podcast right, right you know and like when everyone was like suddenly absolutely obsessed with stand-up right and like and and like mythologizing the stand-up and like yeah. and like that is and so i was like and i was doing that too and that's also part of why i felt like safe to even go into it because it was like in the air i don't know and like but i definitely felt myself kind of reacting against that a little bit and like kind of resenting the fact that I that like kind of the the, the jokes needed to be jokes and they need to be like confessional and you had to be yourself and so I like I was like doing characters and stuff and then I dropped that I did that I feel like I did that for like two or three years and I was like this is like alienating uh -huh. no one really knows what I'm doing I'm like slipping into characters out like telling people that I'm about to slip into them which is like obviously fine yeah. but I felt like I was performing at like kind of traditional like sweet little stand-up venues with like normal normal people in the audience and I was like you know and I and I I was like I think I just want to like kind of drop this a little bit and then I started like I got back into I think like writing more like jokes which 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 led to or maybe I'm jumping way ahead you can tell me uh, eventually we get to literally me yes <laughs> which, which was a show yes well that yeah that was like the big like the thing that happened to me that was like very uh like really helpful to my my whole career was that was that ours you know ours nova ours nova, ours nova yes they asked me to do uh to host to this, their to this day you're on their video screen like previewing shows like sean early you know like they do like a commercial and they show all these people and you're just saying you're on the okay, commercial thank, thank god commercial, yeah. Yeah. yeah if i wasn't i'd be horrified <laughs> um but like yeah no i they asked me to host their like uh variety show they had like kind of like 
built-in like monthly variety show that had had various hosts over the years and they asked me to do it and I was like I was real I was really hungry but I was also really excited to host a show and not have to like be a guest on shows and like to be able to make the environment and to make it feel kind of like cabaret-y and like um to have like you know it, it seems like so uh it was never you know there was nothing about it that that was like transgressive or that you know interesting but it did feel like when i was doing all these shows where like which were very kind of normal like straight guy stand-ups and like Oh, yeah. at like UCB and stuff it was really nice to have a place like that where I could just be like where I could like you know sing an Aaliyah song or something or like right. you know or and like have my friends on and it, and it was so and Steve and I made a bunch of videos together for that to promote those shows and and that's and that's when I started doing once I kind of got in a groove with that I, I did a big solo show literally me which was like, I don't even, you can, you can barely even call it a show. It was just like me doing Santa for a long time and singing songs. And, so, it, but it was very well received, am I right? Uh, I mean, it, it was, it was, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it was like, it was like people yeah. came. Yes. Lots of people came and like that, those, I don't know, that kind of, yeah, it was. Can, <laughs> can you describe putting all that show together a little bit? Yes. I, I mean, I did you have like, I mean, I really romanticized that time. That was like, again, living with Steve, like yeah. him watching me, like yeah. not go to sleep and like me, like avoiding, like, avo you know, whatever. I don't know. I, I, well, can I, John, can I, can I interject? I remember yeah. talking to Steve once about, about you and he said to me, wow, you know, the genius of John is like, he was always on. <laughs> Never times at all. Yes. There you go. Yeah. I mean, that's probably... Not the verb, like, you know? Yeah, well, but I think it's also part of your technique. I mean, like, your your performances are very authentic. Like, yes. you know, they're... I mean, in clearly... Thank you. Know, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very nice. It's, well, it's yeah. You. It's nobody else. It's you. Yeah, you in know? the moment. That's very nice. Well, I mean, it's hard not to hear that as... um. Yeah, <laughs> as a as some sort of like comment on like some sort of mania, but I was no, no, I know, no, I know no, that no, he didn't no, no. mean it that way. He didn't mean it that way at all. I can assure you. <laughs> no, 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 I. He said it was sincerely. No, that's yeah. <laughs> that's very sweet. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of flipping that around, but I. That's okay. Uh, that's what our minds do. I understand completely. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, I no, I was like preparing for the uh, the thing about that I love about those shows is like I have people who play in a band for me and like we do covers of songs that are like strung throughout the show and that is like the most fun that's like the part that I actually prepare for and like rehearse and take very seriously and it's so fucking fun the rest of it is all me like cobbling it together so last minute <clears throat> right. completely losing my mind not sleeping so much self-hatred like it's been interesting having a boyfriend in the past like three years and having him witness it because normally I used to just be kind of on my own just like <laughs> self lacerating just like yeah. you know and, and like throwing shit together but it wasn't embarrassing because no one was watching me doing it and now like Gordon sees me like once a year descend into like an absolute just like hell cave could you do an impression of how Gordon deals with that? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I just described him as Jimmy Stewart earlier. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, what is he? He's very, uh, he's extremely patient and like is very good at kind of like talking me down, like talking me off the ledge, yeah. you know, right. and like helping me remember that like I, I actually like doing it. Like when I'm when I'm finally like performing it, I I am enjoying myself immensely, and I will. I just need a couple more hours till I'm like there. Right. You know. Right. Um. You made an appearance on the groundbreaking HBO show Girls. Is that right? <gasps> I was cut. You were cut. Yeah. I saw you on it. I'm pretty sure I saw Did you. Did you see on an outtake? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I saw you on it. Wait. I promise. You. No, no. You're. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Go ahead. I know what you're thinking, which is like a little a character I did of like a kind of crazed like E News yeah, yeah, celebrity like, commentator on the red carpet. Oh yes. And I did it at the girls' premiere. Oh okay. right. Which is but I did shoot 
a, like three lines on girls and I was, and I was in my underwear Wow. and I was so self-conscious and, and I was miserable and I, I couldn't believe I had said yes, but I was like, of course I was going to say yes. Right. And I was like, but I just was like, I don't like, I don't want to be in my underwear on TV right now. I really don't. And like, and, and I, and they cut the part and I was so relieved. Could, could you, could, could you talk to us about playing female characters about um, when you first started doing that? And I, I, we love what you're doing with your hair, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's just something I do. And last of the Mohicans kind of a thing. with this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, I, it is my hair's getting so long, you know, Gordon's been cutting my hair in quarantine. Oh, good job, Gordon. But this is no, this is like, I need a cut. We're, we're like, yeah. so, but, anyway, but I'm, I'm kind of compulsively doing this. Um, anyway. And, uh, and talk to us about doing Paris, that movie Paris that was on HBO. Oh, with, yes. Not HBO, sorry, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I got HBO what, on the brain. What's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with with uh, the, very, <laughs> the very funny lady, Kate Berlant. Oh, yes. Berlant's a genius. We, yeah. we need to talk about Berlant yeah. shortly. Yes. Well, you know, interesting. I feel like these things can kind of transition beautifully into each other because, yes. you know, of playing women. Um, yes. Yeah. But, okay. like, yes, I mean, I, I always... I mean, the thing is, like, all my models comedically were women, you know? So, like, all my favorite characters were women. It was, and that's what was, I think, kind of, it was, like, kind of jarring for me because once I, like, started making my own material, I was like, oh, God. I, like, I like, didn't even realize it. I was like, I only want to play women, I think. Like, I literally was just, like, my all my, fa- like, the, to me, it's, like, Valerie Cherish, the Lisa Kudrow character, you know, Jerry Blank, like, mm-hmm. Jennifer Saunders, Ab Fab, like, you know, it's like, I'm like, oh no, like, I literally can't even, what, it, what, who would I even be as a kind of male, like, what would my kind of male persona even be? I literally was like lost and like, but ex- also excited to play women because I was also really getting John Waters at the time, like very late in the game. Sure. Mm-hmm. And like, I was like in love with Divine and like, and Steve and I were like watching a lot of John Waters together and like, uh, I don't know, I, I, I we made a short together that where I play like a woman, a teacher. And it was like, it was really interesting, like doing that with Steve and, and like kind of pushing it in a direction that was like more like kind of sincere and less like sketch, you know, it was like a little more kind of short filmy kind of moody. And like, we got like a real wig designer to make like a lace front wig. And I did like really real kind of makeup. And we like agreed that we should try to make it as real as possible. And that was like a really kind of foundational moment like that was, that was amazing that piece and thanks when you, when you broke your nail at the end or yes something, like, yeah all right it's a, a paper cut paper cut uh-huh. yeah and i yeah that was that was a that was out there it was strange like but it was also like very palpable you know powerful stuff. yeah powerful totally stuff. that yeah. was like me and steve were like we like really worked so hard on that and and it was very like that was like a, a very like emotional, like intense experience where I was like, we like watched the footage and I was like, this is so scary. I was like, I can't believe I like have done this. Like, you know, when you're like making something and you're just kind of, you're like running on fumes and you're not even really thinking about what you're doing. You're just kind of making all these decisions. Yeah. And then when I like saw the raw footage, I was like, what am I doing? I was like, I can't believe I'm playing. Like I'm like sincere and I'm not like sending up this woman. I'm like, truly playing her and like I looked gorgeous like I look like I look like I'm like passing you know and it was like I was like it was very vulnerable I felt very terrified to put that out in the world and like sometimes I still like wake up and I'm like I like realize that that video is on the internet and it feels like so like crazy to me but um yeah I just I liked and but then once we like kind of found whatever that style was I feel like we like loved doing that and I did it I feel like not that many more times even really but then I then I honestly, like, I was just became interested in, like, what it would be like, what would, I kind of forced myself to figure out what is, like, the male persona. Like, if I'm not going to have a wig, then who am I, what am I doing, what am I satirizing? And I feel like I very quickly realized, like, I'm kind of, like, my kind of, like, male comedic persona is this kind of, like, gay, like, kind of phony, you know, kind of like um like uh per, like super like posturing all the time and like yeah and musical, like, theater. Uh, musical theater exactly totally <laughs> so yeah so some sort of something in there and but and then I also like met Kate and that was like a full to me she's like 
Lennon and McCartney. Why, why even try to play women when you're like next to Kate Perlant? Okay, who's like right. perfected it <laughs> yeah, right. you know and i and i and i kind of was like oh okay and, and i'm not that wasn't very conscious but i have thought about that it's like i start kind of stop doing it around then mm-hmm. i mean i still do it every once in a while i still have like yeah and characters. And, and we're talking about the kate berlant that appeared in uh, quentin tarantino's latest movie once upon a time in hollywood exactly Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Very, very. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't. I'm not telling you when. I'm telling our viewers. I know, but yeah, it's a good yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. So, uh, um, showgasm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What were the differences between that and literally me? The showgasm. Truly, or... James Lipton. Um, <laughs> I. Good at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> showgasm. <laughs> um, no, that was that was. I, it's it's not even important. It just was like a variety show. That's the show I was talking about. The month. Oh no, that's what you were talking about. Right now. Okay. And then it kind of became I like formal rather than me just hosting. Showgasm was me hosting. Okay, John, I've got another one. I've got another one. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Bob's Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alton Crespin. Oh, that's the character's that's name. The character, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you got anything to say about this? Uh, no. Uh, no, I, um, I, lo- I mean, I think that show is so funny. And I right. felt so, they like made me feel like a star on that show, honestly. Well, you are. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, but you also appeared in a, um, the Judd Apatow produced comedy Love on Netflix. Long. Yes. I had like literally I four lines. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love y'all how you have it printed out. There are no small actors, <laughs> only small. Yeah, I saw you and I was like, that's John. <laughs> small actors? I fucked up the quote. I know. Stop, <laughs> there are small actors. No, there are no small characters, whatever. Um, uh, but no, but yes. uh, we want to know about, um, well, we're going to talk more about the Netflix special in a second, but yeah. how was it officiating Amy Schumer's wedding? Totally bizarre. As like, very scary, yeah. Um, just surreal. I mean, it was like the Gordon had just moved in with me like a week prior. Wow. And um, and so I was like distracted. You know, I was like thinking about other things. Obviously, it's like a huge life change. And then like a week into our like domestic relationship, she like texted me. It was like, will you? appreciate my wedding and um and i was so scared and i because i just that i feel like is just a lot of pressure period and then but then she asked me to do it as vicky and i felt less pressure but still terrified and then i don't know it was again it was the same thing like i stayed up all night i did not sleep i was like drinking coffee at like 3 a.m not having written a word like just true mania and then like thank god at like 5 a.m like it started happening and then I like, you know, and then Gordon drove me to like Malibu and like literally painted my nails at the wedding. It was very sweet. And, um, and it was Gordon's idea for me to be barefoot, to officiate barefoot, which was like perfect for that character. And honestly, I slaughtered. Nice. (laughs) Cause she is, that character is very like, it was kind of genius of her to ask me to do it as that character because the character is very funny, but she's also like very sincere. Like she has her own kind of form of like Christian like sincerity. And so like, it was, it was actually like, it was like beautiful. I felt permission to be funny and also like send them off in a way that was also like, not just fully a joke, you know? Right. Right. But without having to be cheesy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It It was a perfect balance. Can we can we go back to your your Dave mentioned Netflix? Let's talk about your next Netflix character special, which uh, was sensational in my view, folks. You should check it out. It's a character show from a few years ago. Mm-hmm. A lot of these leading you know up and coming comics do get thirty minutes to do a show. How did you create that? How did that come about? Blah 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 blah. Well, that was the mm-hmm. most like uh, that's the still the kind of best thing that's ever happened to me. Like most kind of creatively fulfilling experience of my life and like and I and also it really kind of incorrectly prepared me for this industry I literally was like oh so once I do this it's all going to be this I I thought it was going to be like you start with characters and then it's going to be like then you're going to be 
again like in this position where you're like writing creating starring like from here on out and it's like literally obvious has not been the case you know not but i'm yet. not saying that, i'm not yet i'm not saying that's like completely you know off the table but i just i thought i i just kind of very naively was like here we go um because it was so fun for me i was like yeah is everyone else having fun you know but um i no it was just like a, a an executive at netflix had seen my show literally me where i like did stand up but i also made short films where i'm kind of doing the kind of john like that male persona that we were just talking about uh and also like where i was playing vicky and i was like doing and i was playing this character like jason that i have like you know it it's like and they were just trying to do like and they only did one season of it they were trying to do like they wanted to get into like kind of like what was happening in this like quote unquote like alt comedy scene with like me and Kate and like Dr. Brown and like That's you know so there uh, there was like something I think kind of going on maybe uh and they were like trying to like get in on that and like give those people platform they wanted to make like, an unconventional comedy special and so they asked me to do it and I was like literally like I already had an entire thing planned because I was like what my, I thought like one day when I'm like 52 I'm gonna make a solo sketch show that was like my dream and I and I had this plan of like an arc where I'm kind of doing that John persona and then you have like fully realized self-contained characters in between and then it would end with like a lip sync of a song that's been thread throughout and like shot in this way like you know I literally had it like complete basically written and then like they asked me to basically do it like they were just like, do and they were like, you have full wow. creative freedom. It was, it was like a bizarre moment where they were just like, yeah, do whatever you want. And like, they tried to impose some sort of like rule, some kind of coherent thing on it for all of them. And then they immediately were just like, well, this is not, this is a losing battle. That's, it's going to make no sense. Like you guys are all too different. And then like, they just let me do whatever I want. And like literally never said no. And like, I, and it was like totally thrilling and I felt very kind of prepared to do it. I had been like making all these videos like kind of obsessively for a few years and like I had always dreamt of like that kind of a showcase for myself and um and so I was like I don't know I I it was like a just a total joy. I didn't feel like scared or like yeah. You know, I, I, and I had just gotten in a groove of like making things. So I was like, here we go. I just now get to do it with money behind it. And like, I don't know, it was just, a, it was totally thrilling. And like, I feel like it's been a really good calling card for me, like for people to know that I'm, you know, that I'm have a point of view <laughs> and that I, you know, kind of, it's, it's easier for people to understand, I think who I am if they see that as <laughs> opposed to maybe other stuff, you know? Right. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of points of view, if I may, preface my next question by saying I Please think do. you're one of the few performers alive today in the Western Hemisphere <laughs> who has the ability to um, engage politically and be very funny and not, oh my God, you know, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, totally. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not saying I agree with that, but I know what you mean by the, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I know what you mean by the eye rolly kind of like, please don't talk I, down. I, I'm, by the way, I, I stand, I, 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 I'm one of the worst for that kind of stuff. So, um, but, uh, but that's, so I just wanted to preface that for you. No, you're not. No, no, I'm not criticizing anyone. Okay. okay. Uh, We're on the fence. We're on the fence with these. Uh, oh, uh, this beautiful, like when I was uh, researching you, John, I saw you in this beautiful, this great thing when you did the beautiful Joe Biden outfit where it says no and you got the oh, yeah. iconic glasses like from the 80s, you know, really hot. Uh, could you tell us about how that came about and blah, 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 blah. I mean, uh, I mean, well, I, that, yeah, go ahead. That was literally a costume for a search party. Oh, yes, which we're going to talk about shortly. Yes. Yes. And, and so I just had, and I, whenever I was in like a particularly like loud costume, I would film myself dancing in it. And because that costume said no, it's by this artist and designer Peggy Noland, who is a friend. Very good. I just want to let things slow down. So <laughs> okay. That friend. Um, uh, sh when I 
when I wore that, I was like, oh, this is so, this can be obviously repurposed for many things yeah. <laughs> um, because of the no. And, uh, and so, yeah, no, I just, I, when he announced, it's so sad. It's like, I remember literally feeling when he announced his candidacy, of course I felt like a wave of like anger and fear that of course people, like he could like possibly get the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> I got under every word. But I, I wasn't. I was unfortunately not looking until the very end. Was <laughs> um, the drama. Uh, what? <laughs> but I did. I really did. Like I was like, to me, it was so obvious that it was such a bad idea. That I thought it's not that I anyway thought my video could do anything, but I did feel like that. What I was trying to evoke with that video was that like he needed to immediately be squashed. And he needed to be like laughed out of the race. Right. Not even because it, he was a threat, but because it's just like, no, 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 we've moved past this. Like we're, we don't do this anymore. We don't do Joe Biden anymore. You know, like, that's, that's not what we're doing. Like we've moved on, you know? And like, I thought it was so obvious. And I, I just remember actually, and because people like really loved that video, I was like, I guess it's like, it's not happening. Like, and, and then it didn't seem like it was happening for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It literally just was always like, he's a joke. He's falling apart. He's a joke. And then boom. Right. So anyway, the video didn't work. Comedy is ultimately ineffective. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, do you think uh, Joe Biden will make a great president? No. no. Okay. okay. Very good. Not at all. But I think I would, of course, love for this, uh, the current nightmare to be over and to kind of, yeah, of do, do, to maybe go into a more comp uh, a more complex nightmare the nightmare we're in is so cartoonish and like yeah. black and white i would it would be nice to have some like nuance in the nightmare you know yeah. um, go ahead, you yeah. you um you were supporting bernie sanders yes the, uh, during the debate yes yeah and um uh what happened with bernie oh, boy. it was a hit job <laughs> <laughs> It was fully a like concerted, just obvious coordination. Right. It was the most, they did it in front of our faces. It was like they were so freaked out that he was in the lead. The media couldn't even acknowledge that he was in the lead. Like they literally couldn't say he. They couldn't say he won certain primaries. They were like second place, though. <laughs> Yeah. They like they literally could not acknowledge it. It was like it was right. so. And then there was like just an obvious coordination for people to drop out and get and endorse biden and and then that was and he was totally squashed people were so scared of him for, it was bizarre yeah. what happened it was yeah. so no, it was so crazy it was a nightmare yeah. do you do you feel now that we're on this like do, do you feel that like he's on the you know because the criticism of him uh after 2016 was like oh and he just told his supporters to vote for Hillary and like kind of a similar thing with but like where do you stand on that? Is he just under pressure to say things like that or do you have a uh, I think I think it's genuine. I think that and I believe him and I like and I think he's right. I think like okay. I I feel like I can that this is the 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 inability for people to hold two thoughts in their head at once in right. this moment is like so alarming. Like great point. Like yeah. I can, I can, I can believe in everything Bernie was like fighting for, like on a policy level, but also understand and forgive him for his like obligation to like, like, I mean, as Gordon put it the other day, he was like, he's our only dog in the race. Like, I don't know if he used the word dog, but, <laughs> but you know that works. <laughs> yeah. Like, like he's our only like super progressive, like he's a senator. That is huge. That is giant that Bernie Sanders is a senator. Like, I, I would like for him to keep his job as a senator. I would have liked for him to have been president. But it's like, he has to interact with that world and therefore, like, kind of, like, you know, give Kamala Harris, a, you know, a thumbs up and go congrats. Like, I, I was so annoyed a right. couple of days ago when he, like, supported Kamala who I really don't like and I'm really you know whatever I'm like I'm devastated by the Joe Biden Kamala Harris ticket of course but or not of course but I am and but like uh, I in no way was I like Bernie should have come out and been like fuck this like not at all I think it's just like it's so it, it boggles my mind that people don't well they, they just need him to be everything they need yeah, him to right. be 
yeah. to represent everything. And like, he's done enough. He's done so much. He's, yeah. I mean, fair play. I think, fair, yeah. I think Kamala Harris dropped out of the, the you know, the, the primaries before the new year, but before Christmas, she was that unlikable. Yeah, she was like one of the first to go of like the major players. I find it very surprising that he picked her. Like, I, 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 I don't know what the logic is there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I also found it kind of surprising when she dropped out because she was a kind of memeable. Right. Like, yeah. Like, she is. Was like, okay. You know, like, people, like, like when she like claps back. <laughs> yeah. You know, like. Right. Right. Yeah. No. I can't. Could we, uh, I'm going to offer up this kind of uh, opportunity to you in a kind of a broader kind of a childlike, if you will, um, way to, I want, because you, you speak so eloquently, uh, could you speak to us? Um, <laughs> I'm getting very emotional here. Uh, do, do, Ice cream. Your, do your John Early version of Chaplin's speech in the great dictator where he describes a more peaceful world. What would you like to see happen in the world? Forget about like the intricacies of like who's going to get elected, but like the, the broader thing. Because would you consider yourself a socialist, John? I just, yeah. Definitely. But I, but I also like, I don't, I'm not equipped to actually talk about that. Like I'm not a, you know, I, I, I'm borrowing even this I'm borrowing it's like my friend the other day was like I have no idea what like I I, I can't literally I can't like actually in good conscience like I'm a socialist it's like right. because because it's so easy right now to to be like I'm this based on like six tweets that you just read sure you know like sure. and 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 also right now it's like when something when, when you're not something you are you therefore have to be something else Yes. Which is like, which is a very weird wow. like yeah. reality we're in. I feel like where it's like, if you're like, well, I'm not like, I'm not what Trump is. Therefore I'm like, I'm all, I'm all the way over here. You know, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like no matter what you get kind of like radicalized, even if you're like a centrist, you know, it's like, sure. which I'm not obviously. Um, but sure. like everything is like, no one's kind of developing their own kind of free thinking, like, yeah. uh, no one's kind of coming to their politics organically. I feel like people right. are coming to it in response to things that are happening. It's like, right. it's like and it's literally yeah. because of Twitter. Reactionaries. And it's, it's all yeah. labels. Yeah. It's all labels but too. I, mean, I, yeah. I think a lot of it is fear to fear to fit in. You know, people don't want to totally. be um, left out in the cold, you know? Right. Totally. So yeah. I guess all that is to say, I'm just like, it's yeah. embarrassing to me that I've like literally said in interviews, like I'm a socialist. I'm like, I literally don't even know what that means. It's like, I like, could not tell you right. Yeah. anything about the history of socialism i would like i'm like just now okay i have to tell you guys this i was in a bookstore in brooklyn brooklyn yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and i they had these, these little books oh, oh, these neoliberalism. Books. it says yeah. a very short introduction to neoliberalism and there's once a very short introduction to communism and a very short introduction i think to socialism so we could read it fast yeah. well i yeah like tiny look so tiny <laughs> and i was like and i was buying i was also buying my friend a cookbook for her birthday and so i had them wrap up the cookbook i was like can you wrap this up and they're like sure and then the guy goes do you want me to wrap these up and i realized that i was like i didn't want him to know that i was earnestly buying them aka i didn't want to admit that i didn't know about communism or neoliberalism or so <laughs> socialism and so I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, wrap those up too if you can. <laughs> <laughs> and he like fully wrapped them up, put a little ribbon around them. And then he even was like, this is such a genius gift, like all three of these together. I was like, I know, right? <laughs> and then I got home and like opened up my little like fake gift because I was too embarrassed to be like, oh, I'm learning. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, anyway. Well, you, but, you know, you've got this in, uh, that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Um, yeah. But you've got this uh, empathy for the working class. I can see it in your eyes. Would you, Thank you. Uh, or, well, <laughs> and also I've read things that you said about yeah. inequality and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's just such a, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I came to that through the you know the way that so many people have of like in the past four years which is just like being like a young-ish person who like 
for the first time ever felt actually like spoken to by an American politician in Bernie Sanders, like actually like the right. the words were actually resonating and not just like bouncing off, you know, right. and like, and then like wondering and then feeling the very eerie feeling of like, why is what he's saying controversial? And just trying to like kind of pick apart like what is going on here? Why do I feel scared to be like, yeah, I think people should have health care. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like, what about like myself or about the culture I'm living in is like making me feel that that is in any way controversial or like, you know, unproductive or, you know, whatever. And like, I don't know. So I think I've just, that's my experience is not, you know, I've lived a very sheltered like life. You know, I, I don't, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm no Billy Elliot. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but like, but I, uh, I mean, I, I can, I have the skill, the dancing skills, obviously, but I'm, I didn't grow exactly, up, yes. you know, <laughs> among minors. Um, but like, but no, I, I do think that there's just, we've uh, so many of us myself would have had this like awakening in the past four years of like why is it what is weird about someone just like calling our attention to like the wealth gap like in our society like what is what is like mean or aggressive about that like you know anyway well said um so um uh just a little change of gears here i want to talk about something um so Alyssa milano (laughs) <laughs> oh, here we go. Her, her, her hair is falling out. Um, what right. do you mean? Brit- Brit- yeah, yeah. Britney Spears has chipped one of her teeth. I know Britney is close um, to your heart. Tom Hanks Very. is moving to Greece. Tom Hanks is a nice- <laughs> <laughs> And Ellen is mean. <laughs> well, we what all knew that. that. What is what is going on could in Hollywood? Play, could you play those four <laughs> characters? <up? laughs> what is? <laughs> what, yeah, what is happening in Hollywood? Yeah. I well, I feel like there is a similar thing happening. Yeah. Not that it's related to Alyssa Milano's hair falling out, but like, I do think there is an, a great upheaval happening in our society that I yes. that I mostly actually feel very optimistic about, which is just like, Me too. yes, yeah, I, I really do. Like, yeah. it's it's hard to feel optimistic, but I do feel like it's actually all like, what do we think is going to be easy, like, or that this was going to be like to finally have like a reckoning, like about like structures of power. We do we think it was people were just going to like beautifully hand over the power, like. Yeah in like one simple ceremony but like i think it's happening in the entertainment world too clearly it's just like yes this i mean in some ways i feel like it's embarrassing and unnecessary because it's like why do people care about the entertainment world like Mm -hmm. who fucking cares why are we like the gods of society like why are we the public intellectuals why are we like the because you make people laugh john well, thank you. And and I it's not that I don't, th- I think that's valuable, but I don't think that like comedians or whatever should be the kind of like where we learn our like moral framework from. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's kind of like in some ways I'm like, yeah, Ellen's a fucking asshole. Of course, anyone who like presents themselves as that happy is of course going to be secretly like a raging alcoholic and asshole behind the scenes. You know, it's yeah. like, Duh. Yeah. anyone who's like i just like to dance you know <laughs> is like clearly like hits their wife you know like so like you know what i mean so like that's not surprising to me at all like to clutch i am so embarrassed by like the pearl clutching and the people being like this is an abuse of power and we might it's like <laughs> can we not who care i mean showbiz is so depraved and it always has been it's there's like what what did you think it was that it was like equitable and like warm and fuzzy you know like showbiz is like it's like this it's disgusting i i it's so it's like it's like i feel like it's such a waste of time to be like focusing on like rebalancing like <laughs> the power and the entertainment world and like i mean sure for like the project of like representation like on screen yeah but like i'm just like they're all fucking freaks. Like, uh, like, I don't know. It just feels so stupid to me. But yes, I don't know. Um, you don't have to answer this question. Have you, uh, from working in Hollywood, have you ever seen anything untoward? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel mostly no. Okay, good. I, of course, by the way, would love to answer that question. And then your pockets would become huge. Um, <laughs> 
I'm trying to think if I could drop anything major to like to make this a truly watershed episode. Water cooler. <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever made inappropriate what? advances on you. It's you know I can't That's name so like yet. nothing immediately comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that it has happened. Right, right. Like I have one hundred percent felt people being inappropriate with me. Right. And actually, there are some names coming to mind, <laughs> but no one like no one that exciting. More just like kind of executive types. I have no interest right now in like you know exposing them or like you know whatever. <laughs> because I, we respect that. Don't. Yeah. Because also, again, I'm not. I'm not trying to. It's like. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying this is the way to be in the world. And it's like, I was literally not traumatized by those events. Like if something worse had happened, I would maybe feel the need to report it back. But like, these were like classic expected. And it's also just like, I'm used to being around older gay men. And like, they're always being this like kind of gray area right. of like handsiness. And I just like, I'm like, okay. I just like let, I'm just like, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. Right. You can you can grab my ass. I'm not saying I like it or that they should do that. I'm just saying like, it's harmless. It, it's in my in my unique circumstances. It's it's been harmless, <laughs> but I, I hate it. Sure. Um, what is it like living in uh, Los Angeles? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's great. It's beautiful. It's like, you know, it's like hilly and weird and all the houses are so bizarre and like kind of like whimsical and <laughs> all built in the like 20s and 30s so there's just kind of like a little like i don't know i i love it yeah. i've never lived in like i've only ever lived in nashville or new york so it was like really exotic for me to be around like crazy tropical plants like the ocean and mm -hmm. i don't know i love it do you believe in past lives john no okay great next question <laughs> when, but i would go down i would you know right you know, i would try to would you consider yourself spiritual you know most of my life no cool. yeah. like but i feel like in the past few years i've had really kind of spiritual experiences with nature and like honestly mushrooms okay fair enough yeah yeah you know and like, and that has made me be like, oh, I am spiritual. <laughs> yeah. And maybe my kind of lack of spirituality before was just a reaction to like, you know. We've, yeah, we, beco we become increasingly PC, um, uh, I think, in the yeah. entertainment industry. You haven't. Though. Um, yeah. yeah. What do you, um, do you think comedy is dead? <laughs> Wow, provocative. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch. Is comedy, <laughs> <laughs> is comedy dead, John? um no i just think it's yeah. going through a really hard time i right. think it's, like, <laughs> it's just like really struggling right now it's yeah. like again it's like i just the it's the the utter failure of our public institutions to like provide us with any sort of like leadership so it's like there's too much like comedians have too much like capital or too much importance in the world or something and so like understandably i think some of them are like kind of freezing up and fi feeling like they need to be like say the right thing and do the right th you know like i don't fault everyone who traffics in that you know but um yeah. no i don't think i don't think it's that i just think there's a lot of really kind of uh i think like there's a lot of really i don't have a problem necessarily with like woke comedy you could like if any of my stand-up you could like look at on the page and you could be like this is woke comedy you know i'm like right you know i'm yeah you know, I, I feel like it is like i'm like talking about like you know political issues that are like leftist political issues or you know i'm using inclusive language you know it's like i you know <laughs> sure but like but i um why did i say that john is that 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 um that comedy you speak of yeah. is, is that funny well, it is when I do it, of course it's yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think I think it's I and, and I think it's it's a very limited term. I don't I I what I'm trying to say is that there are some people who I feel like are like very beautifully kind of like 
changing along with the culture right now and like learning and are like and are still holding on to their sense of humor their sensibility like that's possible and then there are some people i think who are like what i was gonna say was i think to me my problem is not so much the you know the comedy itself it's more just like the immediate commodification of it and absorption of it into like kind of executives like and they're like um whatever they they think is you know commodifiable so it's like so right now what we've been dealing with for the past like three or four years as far as when, when i've been in meetings and trying to like pitch things and get things made has been this like executives who have no idea what they're talking about it's not coming from any sort of true like political place for them it's coming They're They just think they need to hit these like check marks and like, we, you know, we want our Nanette, you know, it's like, they want their like yeah. kind of mm-hmm. big um, liberal sensation, like daily show, like kind of right. uh, their, their version of that, you know, mm-hmm. and like, or like on a fictional level, they want like something that where it's just like so radical, like, like so inclusive in this kind of like fantasy way. That's just like, Mm-hmm. not saying anything and it's like you know gutless like i don't know i it's so it, i there i resent more the kind of structural like the, the entertainment industry as a whole immediately absorbing what was actually i think a very organic kind of movement individual almost yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that was happening like as a response to like an inequitable society it's like yeah comedy got more political because the world got more fucked up that's fine but then what but then what the gross part is when that suddenly becomes like like slick and like in advertising and like you know um yeah focus grouped almost yes totally Yeah. yeah And I, and I think that version of it is not funny. Like there's nothing funny about that. Sure. 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 Yeah. There are like, there are comedians who are very political. I think are very, very funny, you know? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who turns you on comedically right now? Like there's some besides Kate. Yeah. Uh, Besides Kate. It's hard. I mean, Jacqueline Novak. Of course. Um, Which we'll get to in a second. Get on your knees. Yes. Yes. Um, John Early. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, we can talk about let's be non-linear yeah yeah let's live a little talk about <laughs> let's talk about your directing of jacqueline uh mm-hmm. how are you as a director um i'm a little like i think i'm the right man for the job for sure but i'm like like i'm so glad that she wanted me to do it yes. um i'm still really learning like what is necessary i feel like i'm still in this like phase it's not that i want to be a director my whole life but i definitely would like to do it again if the timings right or like the feel if it's the, it's the right thing you know but like i'm still learning how to just as you may have witnessed in this podcast only say what's necessary <laughs> Y'all, but, but we love we love that you don't do that <laughs> i was <laughs> <laughs> but well it i guess it doesn't matter in podcast where it does matter in like a rehearsal context where you're working with someone's like sensitive like oh. material sensitive not in its like content just sensitive in that it was it's like jokes that she's been working on for like years and years and years it's oh. like it's better like it is just inherently a vulnerable thing to like be directed yes <laughs> And so like, I'm learning Jack, it was a very interesting process. It was, it was an incredible process because Jack and I are such good friends and we already naturally talk about our like work together. So it was like just an extension of that. But then, be, but then once we got into the territory of like, okay, now we're working on the show. Sometimes I would just like talk in the way that we talk as friends. And then I would realize, oh no, like that maybe got in her head or hurt her feelings. And I, and I, and this is actually a totally different dynamic. And it, so it was confusing in that way. And I want to learn how to be more chill and not feel like I have to say everything that's coming to my mind and learn how to like, just like be patient and trust like whatever the thing is and like, and like drop something, you know, at the right time and then kind of step away. <laughs> right. That's, 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 but right now I think a little too, I was a little too maternal in a way that I think was not helpful to Jacqueline. I was a little too like biting my nails and kind of like in the back seat, like, okay, you know, like in the back row, yeah, sure. you know, like, well, um, but I mean, I'm talking about that. It, there was, it was an yeah. 
honestly an explosive process and collaboration. We had the time of our lives and we like talk about it wistfully all the time. Great. So like, was that like an attachment thing you had to our performance maybe? Like it was kind of, you had a, like. Definitely. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which we all do. Like, yeah, like, yeah. and I'm, her, and she's my friend. And like, yeah, I, I've also watched people for years. Like we used to host shows together. And like, I used to watch people just like fully not get it, like not get her. And like, yes. so I have this like trauma of like years of being like, Jacqueline's a genius. And like, and people not, her literally just like being too smart or like, you know, right. or, or just not finding the right, cause like, also part of her genius is just letting her talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And like, it's hard to find places to do that as a stand up because you're doing like little 10 minute sets. You're not. Yes. Like, right. yes. And so like, I don't know, there, it was very, um, yes, there was like an attachment. And it's like once, whenever I would like let go in the process, like I was literally at like every show for like six weeks. And then I finally was like, I'm not going to come tomorrow. <laughs> you know? And then it was like, once I started, like once I stopped going, the show like got so much better. Well, well, yeah, I mean, like I saw the production and just again to quickly uh, uh, lick your balls again, um, you didn't impose, it seems to me like you didn't like, there's nothing work, worse than a director imposing a vision. Right. On the show and it felt very organic and well played. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to uh, wet, hot American summer. Did we discuss that yet? No. No. Would you like to, John? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was it wet and hot? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, that was the the was like one of the biggest dreams of my life. Just like those those are the um, those are wet hot the original movie. Very like a foundational like text for me and like I, that is like a that movie rocked my world because I had always loved like kind of genre stuff like people doing like style and I didn't realize that you could like I don't know I just it just completely blew my mind and then so then I, that was a truly shocking that was like truly just like working with like actual full-blown heroes it was like deeply nervous but I took it like very seriously and like i felt very like prepared and like you know i was like i'm gonna dazzle these people god damn it you know and it was really and it was it was literally like when i got those sides to for the audition i was like this feels like it was written for me like it and i don't even mean that in like a romantic or like a you know yeah. kind of way it just literally was like this is my sense of humor the because I've like modeled my sense of humor after the wet hot American summer like Stella, mm -hmm. Variety Shack type people like that whole moment in comedy like they're so influential to me so it was like it was like so easy to me I don't know to like do and it was musical theater gay you know right right, right. was the right. the character was a uh, broad city <laughs> Portlandia. <laughs> High maintenance, <laughs> my old friend. Bro, the broad city with two two very funny comedians. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Also, uh, two yeah. Go ahead. Lovely Jewish girls. Indeed. Yes. There's also, <laughs> of course, the disaster artist, a little cameo on that. Yes, little came met Sharon Stone. Oh, how was that? Wow. So cool. Did she open her legs? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she didn't. <laughs> she never did. Um, she didn't. Did she, did she over? No, she, okay. no, okay. she didn't. She but she had her own like, she had a wig that she takes, which is like apparently like standard practice. But I didn't know that. Like, wow. like actresses basically get to a point where they're like, I don't want to be in the fucking hair and makeup chair for like thirty two hours. Like, I brought my wig. Nice, right? Nice. So okay, you style it on a little fake head. Yeah, and then I come come in, you plop it on, Smart and so it's like it it like decreases time your time in the chair by so much because women get called in so much earlier than men and we're getting called in at like 6 a.m 5 a.m so women are coming like 3 30 like <laughs> to like sit, to get their hair and makeup for it's really brutal and insane anyway but i learned that from her she's like she's like i mean she wasn't telling me but she was telling other women she's like bring your own wig gotta bring your own wig which i loved beatrice at dinner yes 2017 <laughs> <laughs> mike white true hero Yes. Mike White. He, he's the guy he wrote that wrote the movie. That's correct. Mike White. Mike White. Enlightened. 
Oh, yes, sweet. with uh, with um, Laura Dern. Laura Dern, one yeah. of my favorite performances yeah. of all time. Yes, great show. Anything to add, John, on that? <laughs> um, <laughs> is that a cricket bat? This is no. <laughs> Two of my this is, You'll know exactly what this is, Ed. This is Her. Gordon testing out a stain. Oh, Gordon doing his thing, yes. Yeah, he's testing out a vinegar-based, this is a not a dye, okay? Right. Let me show you this. It's, it's a not a, you would think like, oh, this is a dye. <laughs> oh, this is a stain because it's on the wood. See, this is the original color. Right. Yeah. But what he did is he used steel wool. I can't believe I'm remembering this, but right. he used steel <laughs> wool and vinegar and it creates this like chemical reaction and it becomes this color. Sweet. And he's, he's literally just experimenting. Wow, that's crazy. He's so talented. Yeah. I couldn't tell you why he's doing it. Yeah. Wow. And it's also yin and yang. Indeed. Sure. Yes. Yang, yang, yin, yang. <laughs> yeah. Everything's binary, baby. <laughs> for, 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 our list, for our listeners, yes. you just have to imagine that. Uh, talk about Late Night with Emma Thompson. I mean, again, I, the, just the, the absolute, I, I, there are some people that I can't believe that I've met and like, or worked with, and she's one of them. She cried like every take when she would have to cry like full just in even when she wasn't on camera like if she'd already cried for the camera and then like you were doing your coverage literally coverage where i was just going like nodding not even not even having a line she would fully tear streaming down her face like she's just like a true pro has not lost like a drop of curiosity but it's also not performative she's not like i'm still invested even though i'm hugely successful like there's like, <laughs> She's like actually like funny and like wants to be funny and is like listening to people and is like I mean she was like literally when we were shooting she was like looking up my stuff and like on YouTube and like talking to me about it in the morning and like it was just wow she's the real fucking deal it was crazy awesome. yeah okay and finally we finally get the search party uh huh <laughs> look at his face uh huh yes we're, we've arrived where, this is good this is where people who aren't hardcore fans like Dave and I will, yeah. only, will know you from Search Party specifically yes um, coming soon to HBO it's on HBO it's on HBO <laughs> <laughs> Max it's your Max it's your Max here's the toy friends not a regular HBO oh what? HBO is there HBO is there still a regular HBO I thought it was HBO Go HBO HBO Go there's HBO Now. HBO Now. HBO Now. Okay. HBO and now HBO Max. Yeah. Bring it to the Max. What's the difference between them? I'm confused. Couldn't tell you, doll. Yeah. Okay. But Couldn't I think tell you. Can still watch Search Party, Party on HBO Max. Max. You yeah. can only watch it there, yes. Was, um, was Search Party originally on TBS? That's correct. Was it? Yes. Well, well, it's, well researched. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how come it's not on TBS anymore? Because Warner owns TBS uh -huh. and they basically knew that everyone in like a couple years time would be playing this like sick game of chicken in front of all of us where like they're like all these competing streaming platforms like Apple and Netflix and yeah. fucking Facebook Live or whatever the fuck it is like every, you know, Quibi, yeah. Peacock. Ah, like they knew that was coming. Peacock, yeah. Everyone knew. Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> Hulu's the OG. Yeah, I yeah, know. Hulu at this point is like, oh. Um, but yeah, it's like, so they knew that was coming. So they, they had an idea to like every channel they owned, like TNT, TBS, like, you know, right. whatever. They were going to like get them all together and like release the streaming platform. So that's, that's what it was. They, they just took it off TBS, basically. Or just, like, selectively took some stuff, stuff off of TBS. Right. I, I, I thought maybe it got a little dirtier or something, and then they had to take it off. Well, I think they realized it was their kind of one kind of, like, premium cable show. Like, it had a little bit of an edge to it. Right. And so, like, it actually would kind of make sense on, like, this streaming platform that was, like, supposed to be cool. Versus, like, it never made any sense on TBS. It was, like, Big Bang Theory reruns. Yeah. And, like search party it makes no it was so weird talk to us about the character in search party Please. his name's elliot, elliot. um they, they like the creators who i knew uh in new york like kind of like comedy ish like comedy adjacent people they 
they know someone it's based on someone they know (laughs) who's kind of like a self-made like kind of instagram like you like doesn't even really like you're not sure what he does Um, (laughs) and he's not sure what he does but it's just like he's always like kind of like doing something and like and there's always like i don't know and 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 they there's i think there's something just kind of like repulsive about this person (laughs) um and they are really really good at writing like kind of repulsive characters um and and then they yeah they just like basically they just like asked me to do it and it was so cool and I and it was like the cheapest I got paid like seven hundred dollars for the pilot Mm -hmm. and like it was no none of us thought it was like gonna happen Mm -hmm. but they I don't know it just thank God had like a little cult following and got, and like, uh, and kind of still does. It's still like this weird little niche. Like no one really watched, like no one knows how to find it. I don't know. But, um, but he, yeah, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a self-described narcissist and like liar and like, you know, it's, it's like, he's very much this kind of, honestly, obviously when they started writing it, they were trying to do kind of like millennial satire, millennial culture satire. But like, as time has gone on, my character specifically, I feel like, is very like much a an archetype in our culture. Like that guy who wrote that. Did you ever read that New Yorker article about the guy who wrote that? Like kind of um, the woman in the window, like kind of thriller, Gone Girl type book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an idea of this. Like he's like a true and like all of his like kind of like lies were exposed like he like lied about like having like all this like family trauma and you know like there's i feel like they're and like elizabeth holmes or whatever there are all these like people i feel like uh who are this archetype or like people in their like, early 30s who just like are like desperate for success and like lie their way to the top with yeah. zero plan of uh-huh. like what they'll do like when the fallout happens when people you know and so i yeah it's it's interesting that like it to me it's like just been a very kind of really fun really silly job like i really am so lucky because like everyone's normal and cool mm-hmm. everyone's really smart and like no one's insane and like it's just like it's like really funny i love that it's like joke i love like a joke dense like kind of like quick sharp satire it's like a dream to just like say lines <laughs> you know wow. instead of just like it, like I do a lot of I feel like people always want me to improvise and like no. it's really nice to be on a show where like on the, the writing's just like good yeah right. you know and I can kind of like hit my marks and I feel like it's like kind of really crisp and like I love that mm-hmm. so anyway I, I it's a great job but it, but but I, I guess all I was saying is like as it, time goes on it's like oh this is like this bizarre like kind of figure in our culture is like the he's like crazy liars anyway whatever well um, i was just curious do you still have to audition or are you an offer only guy now hmm. um i would say i don't audition but i don't get offered parts either <laughs> it's i'm like i'm like nothing nothing's happening i mean i'm just like i i don't know it's bizarre i think there's this kind of assumption that like i mean and this is true like i'm like on this kind of like development track like of like i make my own stuff like with kate so like we're kind of always like in development and people are like oh they write their own stuff and then we're like i'm like guys i'm like does (laughs) does anyone want to offer me a part you know? <laughs> um, but like but i'm fine i'm fine yeah you've managed to sorry go ahead Dave. and describe meeting kate and and how you guys hit it off artistically and, and comedically just like full bone blown full bone full blown instant deep love like very romantic like uh um like i don't know i just like i saw her do stand up we were on the same show and Mm -hmm. I just immediately felt like a a kind of kinship like we were kind of doing something similar and or like liked the same things I mean she we're she's very different you know her stuff is more like cerebral and she's kind of whether she knows or not she's like satirizing a kind of very specific kind of like women's like (laughs) like kind of health world kind of like stuff um 
but like they're at the at its core i feel like we're kind of both very interested in like satirizing the same thing i don't know anyway yeah. the most fun i've ever had in my life it was like two years of like unadulterated just like uninterrupted like like sleepovers making videos together like dying laughing uh, you know and the, and the, and i feel very very lucky that i have like i have a, i feel like most collaborations especially like iconic like comedic collaborations i'm not saying ours is iconic but it is um <laughs> I, you know i think i feel like we're like tortured and like you know there's like lots of resentment and stuff but we like our like dynamic is completely born out of just like giggling you yeah. know beautiful that's and wonderful. I feel very, very lucky for that. Yeah. I think you guys burst onto the stage one night uh, on the Jimmy Fallon show. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. burst. Oh, yeah. You did, you burst on. Yeah. What's it like being on one of those late night talk shows? It's like being in a vacuum. There, it's like an airless room. It makes wow. no sense. It's like, it's not performing. Mm -hmm. Like, That's it's true. like the, it's anti-performance. It's like, the sound is so weird. Like you're in this like weird sound vacuum where you can like barely hear audience laughter. You don't really know how they're responding to you. You're, you're, you don't even hear yourself like echoing because your sound's going like, like directly into a mic. And so you feel so quiet. You're like, am I being loud enough? Right. It's like out of body, very pressurized, but also just like kind of fine and nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't love it. <laughs> right, yeah. well, fair play. How would you like to host one of those shows uh, full time? Yeah, you I would. Host, the yeah. Tonight Show with John Early. That would be fun. That'd be like Dick Cavett. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, it would be cool to do a Dick Cavett version. I guess that would be cool. But I, you know, I don't. They don't exist. We'll make it happen in New Hollywood, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, okay. I think you'd be great on late, you know, the, the Tonight Show with amazing. you know with John Early, eleven thirty-five. You know, you, you do your monologue and you that'd know. be amazing. And Dave and Ed as the guests. You gotta have us on. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like thinking. <laughs> that I'm like racking my brain for the kind of vibe I want, and it's like just immediately not fitting in. Right. Interesting. Um, I mean, but maybe. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. But, um, I mean, you, I would, you, you would be my first and last guest. It would fantastic. be too. Um, you, no, I don't want to become. I don't want to become a raging alcoholic. I feel like <laughs> if you want to host, like if if you host one of those shows, you become like an absolutely miserable, like yeah. de deeply depressed, just like you spend your life away. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to be gossipy, but like I, I've 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 heard stories about Jimmy Fallon where he suffers from pretty. You know, he you know he. He's feeling it, like, you know, that's feeling, all I'll say. Feeling the world. He's, he's feeling it. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of that, John, uh, um, <laughs> this is a cliche question, uh, but please indulge me. What do you do to calm down? How do you unwind? It's a great question. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Um, is it true, Steve Gerrard's assertion that you never turn it off? <laughs> I would say there... <laughs> What about this Xanax? Really <laughs> I wish that's see, that's the thing. recently I have been like, I need to start acting like a celebrity and like get pills. <laughs> you, yeah. Like I, I still have this kind of like, kind of like, ooh, like I will, I would never do that. But I'm like, I want Xanax, <laughs> and I just feel like people with like a the smallest amount of success just like immediately like they're just you know them as someone who has pills. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can have one. You know, it's like, I, I want to like, I really want to get into Xanax. <laughs> um, so that's a goal. I would say, what do I do to calm down? Right. I think there is something true to what Steve said. I think I do have trouble. Like, I think I, I am an anxious person and I'm like, and, and it's very hard for me to kind of like zone out unless I'm like completely alone for like a month. Mm -hmm then I can kind of like, you know, and just like become a blob and like jerk off to like the sun rises. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so poetic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, Amazing. But no, it is, it is hard for me to turn off. I honestly, right now it's, I like cooking. Really? Oh, sorry, honestly. Cooking has really been calming me down. I thought you said cocaine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. I don't like cocaine. I've never liked cocaine. Okay. 
cookie. Um, but I've had fun, but like, I don't, I just find it, it, I, it burns and I don't, I don't like that kind of a high. I like, um, Scarface. Yeah. I like a weed high. Sure. So, so, like, like, so, go ahead. What do you like to cook, John? Yeah. I want to know more about your cooking these days. Uh, cocaine. Cook Gordon. What? Um, cocaine. Okay. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. Just in a little spoon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like no, I. What am I cooking? Gordon. Gordon is a very good cook. Yes. He but he's also been like hardcore, like doing stuff like this. Right. Right. So like I've been kind of I've taken on the more traditionally female role, and I've been I've been cooking more. But I um, I like to cook pasta. Is like my favorite thing. I've been getting really into like proper sauciness mm -hmm. like emulsifying like you know like i've always kind of taken pot I've, like, I've always loved pasta but like i've never aspired to like get the texture right interesting right like and that is a recent thing like i feel like in the past like couple of years i've become obsessed with like using the pasta water and incorporating the cheese and like you know and like and tossing it right at the last minute and then like you know that's what, and like making the the gloopiness like of the sauce is like the kind of that's been my like cooking. Um, it's been leading the way. How, how do you like your pasta? Like, do you like it firm, al, al dente? Um, al dente, bitch. Al dente. No, no other way. Right. I mean, if, you're, if you're doing anything softer than al dente, you're trash. <laughs> before I before I continue, I just want to reiterate <laughs> yeah. because I know Steve Gerard is going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> that when Steve said that about John not turning it uh, off ever, he never meant it in a negative way. Okay. Well, and I want to say, I want Steve to know that he, if he's listening right now, if he didn't just turn it off, um, that I, I literally did not, I promise you, I didn't take it personally. I was just trying to kind of, I was, as you so brilliantly observed, I was projecting oh, yeah. my own kind of like, of course, <laughs> dark psychology onto it. Okay. So you, I was also, I was deflecting a compliment. Okay. I knew it was a compliment. You've managed, you've obviously managed to stay busy during COVID-19. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> is that, the way you said is that true is like <laughs> like it's truly like a crazy rumor that's been going around <laughs> i've stayed busy um i sort of i mean like not really i feel like i've just been kind of like cooking and hanging mm -hmm. with gordon but i you know thank god there are like a few recurring jobs i have like voiceover jobs good great and been, like we were like gearing up to shoot a pilot for a sketch comedy show, which was like a big dream. And and then it just completely fell apart with COVID. Uh, so we've been like writing stuff and like trying to keep that going and, you know, but like, it's all just like, it's all pretty, it's, everything is uncertain. No one. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, we, we have, um we have a question, if you like a gimmicky question that we ask our guests always kind of near the end. Yeah. And we're curious, very interested to see what um, you say, because uh, it's 50-50 at the moment. Some guy, guys say yes, some say no. Yeah, well, uh, um, Vladimir Putin came out this week and said the Russians have the vaccine. And yes. Would you, would you take a vaccine, John? Or the vaccine, in quotes. Would you prefer the, the Russian year? vaccine? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start off. Would you take the Russian vaccine? Or the American one, or the all-American one? Well, we only have the <laughs> <laughs> I would I would not take whatever like thing that Putin says he okay. has. So, I would not do that. But the second there's a vaccine that seems more trustworthy, yeah. I mean, not the second. Right. Maybe I would wait. I'm kind of, this is something Kate said the other day. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, is this smart? Like, I was like, maybe I'll wait like a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so I sick. Let's let's see who kind of uh, let's gets, see who drops dead let's first. Let's see who drops yeah, dead yeah, yeah. Deformed, yeah, yeah. gets yeah. mentally yeah. and physically deformed from it. or sterilized. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. but that's what the tests are for, right? I would take. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh. Apparently, I would. No, I would totally do it. Or what about you? Um, we're not sure. We're not sure at yeah. all. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm uh, Gordon. Are you anti-vax? I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> so, 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 John, here's the thing. Going back to your comment earlier. Uh, like I'm a, I'm a hardcore vegan uh, lunatic and I believe, you know, in nature and all that shit. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm kind of leading in a direction there. I'm answering your question. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm just squeamish with, with needles. I'm just like, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's not enough. 
got to get over it. Wow. That was um, awesome. You look like Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. You don't look like him. You sound like him. Thank you. <laughs> There's a shape. I see it. Um, no, I, I think that you should – you're worried about it being a kind of unnatural, like, chemical that you're injecting in your body. Correct. Yeah. So is what's your relationship to, like, other medicine? I believe in the holistic, natural approach to existence. Totally. And so but what do you feel about – and this is not, like, I'm not – this isn't confrontation. Okay, but, like, <laughs> oh, I, I love what that. Do you, what do you feel about, like – I mean, like, previous pandemics? Like, have you, like, like – Yes, the curbing of like influenza, the Spanish influenza, like through vaccines. Like, what do you? Well, I think that uh, well, we're into this territory now, and we're, as Dave would say, we're lifting up our dresses slightly, and it's, it's nearly <laughs> it's near the end of season one, so I'm open to doing that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not speaking on behalf of Dave; I'm speaking on, on behalf of the illusion that is Ed Malone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I say that because I'm very Indian guru-ish, John, and I don't believe there is an Ed Malone or whatever, you know. But, yes, um, yes. Um, I, I believe there's an Emma alone. <laughs> <laughs> I think the current situation has gotten, uh, is, is uh, pales in significance to the, the pandemics that you've referenced. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meaning just like death toll wise or like? Or like... Yes. Okay. And indeed yeah. the, the perspective uh, 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 that's been put forth. But I'm, I'm going to see how the Russians do anyway. Yes. I'm going to keep yeah. an eye on them. it up. The Russians and, are yes. coming. And then, I'm, and, then, and then we can, you know, we'll see what happens in the fall, you know? Indeed. Um, well, I, is yeah. he really, is he, he just said that he has a vaccine? Well, and it was I on the news. It was on like that. CNN or something. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was on CNN. Yeah. It, so it must be true. Yes. <laughs> it, mu it must be. <laughs> could, could I ask what, one, an, one last question? Maybe, or maybe there'll be more. We don't want to take up your whole evening. Yeah. Um, what are your hopes and dreams artistically for the future? Like, what would be like dream project? I mean, I, to me, like to have a sketch show with Kate would be like one of the great dreams. Um, wow. To make cool. like a movie or two before I die. That's right. like, that okay. I like kind of write, you know. A vehicle. Um, a vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> totally. Deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, I mean, it's more, yeah, just like something that uh, I, it's, I guess I am kind of romanticizing like a kind of, um, I, yeah, I would love to do something that is meaningful to me in the way that like the kind of formative, you know, the murals weddings of my childhood were, you know, I would love to try to like pour my energy but like you know who knows if that's how things actually get made and they might be more accidental i feel like in times when i've tried to make the meaningful object or whatever it it fails or something or it's not as good or you know so i, I don't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know if i should aspire to that or if i should just keep letting things happen i don't know it's an inch i have to figure that out yeah and um, go ahead dave I'm and just one last thing came to sure, you. Sure, sure, sure. And my question is more social and political. Oh, here um, we go again. You know, we've had a hell of a year so far here in the United States, you know, with... Uh, yeah, with grabs. Yeah, it's okay. okay Sorry, I finish? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this guy. No, but, um, you know, COVID-19, China, you know, all, you know, all this stuff. Um, black people getting murdered by police officers, yeah, uh, ri rioting, all sorts of upheavals. Um, are you... In spite of all that, do you remain optimistic for the yes. future of humanity or, or not? <laughs> I honestly don't know. What? I'm like, I'm like, I feel like we are probably, I don't know. Like in, in a long-term way, I feel like we might be like, you know, dying off. We are dying off. Mm -hmm. But that's also not necessarily a bad thing. Like that wouldn't, you know, I that I feel optimistic about like kind of ways of of us accepting that through yeah, well, like honestly through like socialism. It's like yeah. I feel like socialism is a way for us to die with dignity to like wow. go into hospice care rather than just like being left on the streets like choking yeah. each other to death, eating each other. Right. So like I don't know. I feel like we're getting closer towards like. Guys, texts, emails, like oh, that kind of stuff that we was, said. Yeah. Just when you're getting emotional. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Jesus. Yeah. Was, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and and they, again, and I, I told, lost I, the thought. I told that person not to fucking text me. <laughs> Everybody's in love with Dave. It's a woman. Okay. It's a woman. She's yeah. Japanese, and yeah, she's she's a Yoko. Mother. Oh no, Yoko. Yeah. <laughs> well, gonna, my Japanese neighbor. She she's she's going to destroy the podcast. <laughs> By the way, everyone was in love. I feel like with you at Atlantic. Yeah, yeah I very mean, charismatic. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, come on. I, I was in love. If I haven't made that clear. I, I guess it was like the Irish accent, though. John just said he yeah. was in love with you. I, well, you, I know, but I, I felt like you guys were fetishizing me for my Irishness, you know? Oh, wow, yeah. racism. <laughs> I mean, I, of course we were. <laughs> yeah. But, that, like, come on. Well, like, I'm a person, John. I'm a person. I'm a real not person. You're a hot person with a hot accent. <laughs> Damn. Wow. See? It's not, it's, it, yeah. Well, John, thank just you. Just to, just to, all you want. Thank you, John. Thank you. Just to, kinda, just to kind of... Uh, almost yeah. close for the evening and yeah. double down on your last few comments. Uh, I don't know if you're into astrology, but you are a star. And <laughs> that was very well said. Wow. And, uh, wow. On, Dece- on December 21st, well, uh, yeah. December 21st, 2020, the astrologists tell us that this is going to be a very important day for mm-hmm. the transformation of society in a positive way. Mm. And we really believe, I've begun the podcast by saying this, and I'm going to end by saying this. We believe you are going to be an integral part of that artistic. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I'm honored. Are you ready to take up the mantle of leading us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm weirdly ready. Like, I'm not scared. I'm just like, let's do this. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, I, no, I'm, thank you. I will, I don't know. I'll just be right. I'll be waiting December 21st. Yes, you you feel it energetically, uh, and tell Gordon too because it might be a good night to you know concentrate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, can I last question, and I mean it this time, mm-hmm. uh, a, a conventional question, if you will. Conventional. Yeah. Are Are you and Gordon going to get married and have adopt kids, and or, have or adopt have, kids, or have kids? Maybe if you're allowed in the new world. No, you might be able to come out of the month December. Early. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're both kind of anti marriage marriage i mean it's no judgment to anyone who does but like i I don't think for us i don't think so but um and then kids wise i also think it we might not have i mean no i definitely don't think we wouldn't try to biologically produce a child never i gay people who try to do that i think are mentally ill fair enough um, I just don't understand like why Mm -hmm. you're look. how can you look at the world and the the lack of resources Mm-hmm. And then and then go no 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 I need to biologically produce someone right now um, seems crazy to me when you're already in the position to just like adopt if you want if you want a child so bad um, wow. but I uh, but no I don't I don't know I don't think so I think we're both kind of no I mean I used to be really really like I used to really want like to adopt a child not even really want it I just kind of always assumed I would but I I don't really want that anymore. Mm-hmm. Did you know the moment you met Gordon that he was the one? <laughs> um, I, well, you know, kind of. I mean, like, in that I met him many, many years ago. And, like, there was always a deep kind of, like, you know, that I believe was mutually felt. Like, a kind of deep, like, one day you and I will date. Mm-hmm. Like, I met him a million years ago. And, like, and there was... um it was, it did feel kind of faded. And then like literally the second I heard he was single, I was like, just like popped into his life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Did you ever have a funny moment with him and say, and call him Flash Gordon? <laughs> no, okay. I did, you know, I didn't. That would be an inappropriate line if you had a quickie, right? Yeah. It'd be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> a stern moment. Uh, but yes. Any closing remarks from anybody? This was a riveting conversation by an absolute... I, well, thank you guys for letting me talk. This, I just, I'm horrified by how long it took me to answer each question. No, it was amazing. Yeah, no, it, was, it was like a John Cassavetes movie. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you. John, thank you for rolling with all our questions. For being so you know, open. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that we can pronounce certain words. Thank you for... You know, and I think working that, with us, and yeah. that statement you made yeah. halfway through the podcast regarding uh, people not being able to think two things at the same time is a very powerful statement. Yeah, the truth lies in the gray, folks. Yeah. remember this. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's a gray area with the vaccine. 
Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could get new ones. Yeah, yeah. indeed. If there yeah. was a healthy vaccine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it was vegan oriented. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there are there literally animal products in most vaccines? Like, is there's there like feces. What? what? Human feces. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is there is a horse like some people, gum? Some people yeah. say that there might be human fetal matter in some of them. Some and, people argue and, that, and that's kind of freaky. That's freaky. You know? Wow. Yeah. Like embryos. I'm into it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I'm sure. Yeah. Fair you know. Play. Yeah. yeah. Hey. We'll see. Yes. Wow. My God, we're going to have to have you back in season two. Yeah. We're... <laughs> yes. This is only season one. This, yeah. is a, this is this is the season one finale. Cliffhanger. Yeah. yeah. Is it really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Is... I'm I'm truly honored. Yes. We're honored to have you on because yes. you know you're you're the shit. As yes. Well, say. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this to you now. I'm going to hopefully not offend you now. Please do. But yeah. I I always like to warn the podcast that I parent. I literally until my mother has left this earth right i cannot post the podcast that's okay you can't you i respect that <laughs> sure because she literally she hates like she listens to every single thing that i post and like uh -huh. if i talk about like my upbringing in any sort of critical way or uh -huh. like if i talk about nashville or her or like anything she like loses her mind like sobs so uh, maybe i'll find a way to hide it Okay, I've heard you can do that. You can hide a post, but I'm just letting you know now on the record. Appreciate and well, I mean, you know, maybe your mom might find us charming, Irish boy. Well, I know she would. Yeah. Um, is your mom on Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh I see. Okay. She's on Instagram and Twitter. I see. Right. Yeah. Well, that's okay. No, yeah. no worries at all. That's that's, that's all right. good, John. But I think I, I I'm sure there's a way to kind of curate who sees. Yeah. Yes. But, okay anyway anyway that's, no, that's all good thank, thank you. you so much thank you for coming on i'm gonna stop we're gonna recording. stop recording and maybe we'll say goodbye less formally yeah okay. i love that how do i stop we'll dismount recording. play stop press stop press, just press